Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a stream format that has become a little bit of a staple for me, Shuffle Saturday, as I start up the prediction that I always start up at the start of this stream, but I forgot to do so before starting a talk for some goddamned reason. If you haven't witnessed this before, I have my game collection loaded into this little website called The Back Loggery, which uh, Elmo here is covering up. Let's take him down from the stream. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. Um... It includes this neat little feature where it'll randomly suggest a game out of my collection for me to play. Using that feature, I will pull a random game from most of the games I have and have the technical setups to stream. Currently around 1,600 different games. I'll then play that game for the next 30 minutes, unless I decide to veto it, or someone in chat types exclamation mark veto, which will let me know to mark off one of those lovely little vetoes you can see at the bottom of the screen, and we'll pull a different game. As you can see, I only have two vetoes for the entire night, whereas you all have twice as many. And I do try to go for, at minimum, three hours, and I'm feeling pretty good tonight, so this might be a longer one. Or, it's not even night yet. Why did I say tonight? Whatever. That being said, I will automatically toss out any game I can't stream, either due to technical issues specific to the game. I'm continuing to weed these out as time goes on, but particularly older PC games, sometimes I just cannot get them to play nicely with OBS, or... They show up, but they're in an incredibly tiny resolution, or just something that, frankly, I can't take the time to fix live and I want to keep the party rolling. Or because it would get me banned. An example, if the game rolled is uh, Sakura Dungeon or something, because I am a filthy weeb and my Steam library shows it. You can also use the veto command mid-game to stop it immediately, or use exclamation mark encore. Um, when I give a little warning, you know, if there's two to three minutes left and you're like, you know what, I want to see more. Um, that will burn a veto, and we'll stay on that game for another 15 minutes. You can use that multiple times per game if you want. Um, the record so far is, I think, I had Super Meat Boy extended by 45 minutes out because people were really vibing with it, and so was I, honestly. There are also some channel point rewards you can spend your garlic coin upon to affect things as well, including the ability to outright choose the next game. I also have to give a continuing shout-out to my buddy Rapukin, Thanks to his generosity and the magic of uh, Steam library sharing, I've added around 200 uh, games that I have never played before, most of them I've never heard before, to the randomizer. So that just adds all kind of additional chaos, you know. I was starting to get to kind of halfway know my own collection, so we've just added, injected that much more chaos and that much more, wait, how do I play this? What the hell is going on? Which really I think is what you want in a stream like this. Now, without any further ado, um, let's get to the first game. First up for me on Shuffle Saturday shall be... Tyranny on Steam. Interesting. That is a CRPG. It's got a slower start, but I think... I think it gives you enough of an idea of what it is right away that I might let that through. Ooh, that is kind of a bigger install. Um, if we're going to be just sitting here for a bit, I might still throw that out. TBD. Steam, how long does it say? That's... Hmm. Okay, that's not that bad. So we'll be waiting for a minute. I'm going to get that updated. Um, we will have to wait, looks like, about uh, six minutes or so for that to install. But then we will get on to Tyranny. And this is how you know the... Uh, <laughs> this is how you know the games are not rigged. Um, I didn't have this uh, pre-installed beforehand. <laughs> um, just to talk a little bit about, like, general stream housekeeping things. Hey, Silvar, master of the minuscule donations. How's it going, man? How's it going? Thank you for the 43 cents. <laughs> um, I... Posted the schedule for the upcoming week. It's going to be mostly a lot of Fuga Melodies of Steel 2. I'm looking to wrap that up before um, my Nuzlocke project gets back up and running, um, which is going to be Gen 6. And I'll be doing that with my buddies Hugh and Avalon. Mm. Oh, yes. And, uh, right, I was like, there's something big I need to mention. Tomorrow, I will not be streaming my POV on this, but tomorrow... On uh, Hugh's stream, he's one of my recommended channels, if you look. Um, at 2 p.m., I should really know the timing for this offhand. I'm not stalling to look up the time on Discord. What are you talking about? 
2 p.m. We'll be doing a Pokemon Showdown tournament for uh, Gen 5 OU with prizes including the ability to name our Nuzlocke starters and we can only object and uh, to save ourselves from TOS. So that should be a good time and that's going to kind of kick off the whole Pokeboomers Nuzlocke craziness that I get into. So I'm looking to, s to finish up Fuga 2 before then. Um... Okay, the download, like, stopped for a couple seconds, and I was just glaring at my Steam. Sorry. Hey, that is just fine, Nate. Um, just so you know, though, um, last Shuffle Saturday, um, if you check the VOD, which I think it might have already poofed off of Twitch, but it is on YouTube, um, that's where I did that Shuffle Machine concept I talked about a little bit, where, um, they switched automatically and at random times. We had, uh, we had some fun with that. I think I'll be going... Uh, back to it sometime, but no need to apologize, you know. It's good that you went out and uh, had some fun. Um, but hey, happy to have you here now. Um, we're just waiting on Tyranny to download, which allegedly is only going to take a minute, but Steam keeps messing with the estimate. I suppose because me streaming kind of throws a wrench into all that. I don't like having the kind of filibuster at the top of these streams, so I do apologize, everybody. My internet is good, but like, you know, it's still a 16 gigabyte download, so it is not instantaneous. <laughs> and I wish I had a hard drive big enough to just have all my entire library installed, but I don't. A minute, right? You know how these things go, you know. Um, oh, yes, I also wanted to say I had planned on streaming Wednesday, obviously, but between, like, between how long the Fire Emblem stream on Tuesday went and just general things, like, I've started a new job recently, and, uh, this la past week was the first day that we, like, we were kind of let loose a little bit, and we're dealing with customers, and that got more draining than I expected. I think it'll be fine once I'm fully, like, trained up, but it was basically a day full, full of, like, hey, I hear your question. They haven't told me how to do that yet. You need to call back in, be on hold for another ten minutes, and you need to dial four instead of one. And, uh, so it was basically a day dealing with angry people who are like, what? You should be able to answer my question, boy. And I'm like, I'm sorry. So... That was a bit much for my precious little introvert soul. Okay. Tyranny has finally finished. Um, let's... Did I already upgrade, update the category? How do stream again? Boy, this is the best opening 10 minutes I've ever done. Let's flip over here. This usually works for PC games. I don't think I've tried to stream this before. This is a game I've played quite a bit, just never on stream. And let's play some Tyranny. Yeah, my work hit. Oh, okay, great. That. Why is that not full screen? Hang on. I'm not starting the timer until I fix this. Okay, great. 30 minutes on the clock. Let's play some Tyranny. New game, of course. Um, just normal, that's fine. This is more about, like, introducing the game, I would say. Yeah, my work can be a little call centery. Not completely, but. Tyranny is a very interesting game. For over 400 years, the armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel. The game sounds a little loud in my ears. Chained to the Overlord's will. Is it like that for you guys? Now Kairos's final conquest has come to our corner of the world. And two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored. The disfavored. And the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. Okay, once we get out of voiceover, I'll The voices of Narad. Thank you, Nate. Spymaster and Archon of Secrets guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger, 
as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Grave and Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos's ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Watching over the two generals is Tunan, the Adjudicator, Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos's minions. Minions. Tunan brings Kairos's laws to newly conquered lands, aided by the Fate Binders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of Fate Binders when Kairos's armies came to our lands. How could we have known? that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands. That's right. You are not the hero saving these lands that are about to get invaded by this evil empire. You are part of the evil empire. That was what kind of sold me on this game initially. That and my buddy Hugh getting uh, pretty interested in it. Um, let's uh, sure go with this. Ah, got it. I'm just gonna go with basically default stuff so we can see more of the game. Um, and you can get, you can, it's, you know, it's character customization. I'm gonna choose to be a lawbreaker. Evil is subjective. True, it's very much more like an order versus chaos kind of a thing, which is interesting because, like, even within the order that um, Kairos uh, represents, um, there is still a chaotic element, which you could pretty clearly get from the intro, I think, because the Scarlet Chorus are very much, like, they don't have discipline. They just kind of, they just kind of get pointed in a direction and kill everything that's not them, which is interesting. I was trained in the fall in the combat style. Uh, unarmed attacks, which starts out awful, but becomes great, I think? I don't know. Um, also received training in Vigor Spells. Unarmed Mage. <laughs> uh, Banner, that's fine. My name is Bimmer. Um, let's see. I think I need, I want lots of vitality. We'll just kind of assign things to whatever here. I don't even remember what these do. And then, so here is one of the first ways where I think this game really has a downfall. It has this whole like stat system and skills where it wants to be a little more traditionally CRPG, but the only skill you really need um, aside from combat is lore. Because lore helps you out in dialogue and the more lore you have, the better magic you have. So it kind of becomes a one stat to rule them all. And, I mean, you can ignore lore if you want, but it locks you out of a bunch of story, and you have crappier magic, and the AI mages aren't as great. I don't know, it's a whole thing. Um, and we definitely want the conquest, because this is one of the more interesting things this game did, I think. All the world has fallen to Kairos. And now the Overlord's eye is on the tears, our home. The last corner of the world free of Kairos's reign. Two armies, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, march south from the Northern Empire, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. In the early days of 428, Kairos's armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment. The mountainous border that we Tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the Tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the conquerors. Until it's too late. And I know this is just like basically just text with some voiceover. During the conquest, you will decide your character's actions during Kairos' invasion of the Tears shaping the world through which you will adventure over the course of the game. Each choice you make affects your character and how major factions of the tiers respond to you. Your decisions matter, choose wisely. And they're not kidding. Like, this affects a whole lot of how the world plays out. And just like, 
sometimes it's a matter of if you do war crimes, sometimes it's a matter of which war crimes you do, because you can't have to do at least a war crime. The bastard city stood on the northern border between Kairos' empire and the Tears. Built upon a natural harbor at the crossroads between realms, the city was a nexus of commerce. To the Tears, it was the center of all wealth. To a northerner, it was little more than a backwater trading post. Its symbolic status as a gateway to the continent made it a natural first target in Kairos' military conquest. Circumstances were ideal for you to prove your worth as a soldier in Kairos' armies. Taking this army would send a message to the rest of the Tears. Kairos' will is insurmountable. Um, so we can infiltrate or take... We can infiltrate, or we can take part in some skullduggery to infiltrate the city. I myself am a fan of a uh, good knife slipped between the ribs, so we're going to infiltrate the tears. History would remember the Gates of Judgment as the first battle of the conquest, but the real combat unfolded with the advance units of both armies preparing for the coming war. The Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus each had a plan to infiltrate the capital city. Which army did you join? We can join the Elite Disfavored to capture a border garrison. Raven Ash insisted that an early victory in the offensive would boost the morale of his troops and diminish the haughty overconfidence of the Southerners. Or we can join the Scarlet Chorus as they burn everything to the ground. We're going to do burning everything to the ground. The howling mobs of the Scarlet Chorus found easy pickings among the villages and frontier towns. Rallying an experienced gang under your control, you flooded the unprotected settlements with a deluge of bloodthirsty soldiers, rounding up the innocent for merciless rites of conscription. The young and infirm alike received makeshift weapons, and examples were made of all who challenged your forces. Bolstered with fresh recruits, your army gathered strength for the invasion to come. Containing the fire. Uh, we can stop the enemy mages, or we can do further skullduggery with an inside agent. Let's continue our sort of uh, work here. With a border garrison captured by our disfavored allies, you traveled ahead of Kairos' armies and lurked in the shadows of the bastard city. You decided that converting one of the locals to Kairos' side would help bring the city to its knees. After all, corruption starts from within. You can enlist a bitter captain of the guard to sell military secrets, or come to an arrangement with a well-connected smuggler who knew how to sneak agents of the Scarlet Chorus behind the city walls. Scarlet Chorus were better operatives than soldiers, and this work required a subtle touch. This sounds like more skullduggery for the sake of skullduggery, and after all, what could these filthy southern peasants have in military technology that our glorious forces do not have access to? Thank you, Silvar, for that voice redeem. After accepting his deserved payment, the smuggler uncovered a long-forgotten tunnel that intersected with the sewers of the bastard city. Armed with map maps of the subterranean layout, your Scarlet Chorus allies fanned out to occupy various city districts undercover. They spent the ensuing weeks murdering key officials and sabotaging defenses wherever possible, weakening the Tears' capital under the very noses of its leaders. Betrayal of the Bastard City Your tactics of infiltration placed you in the Bastard City ahead of the main armies. Your work softened the city defenses for the arrival of Kairos' forces, but you wanted a decisive gesture that would give your allies a meaningful advantage. How did you assist in the fall of the Bastard City? I can spread fear through assassination, inside a riot, or duel the city marshal. Um, assassination seems good. Um, concealing shadow. Oh yeah, that one's really good for, yeah. You get different abilities based on this too. Right. Keeping to the shadows, you eliminated the leaders of the Bastard City one by one. And this is really good because it's the giant defensive cooldown. And uh, you kind of... It's a little bit like Dragon Age or something where you kind of need, like, MMO-ish tanks. And I figure it may as well be me. Some deaths were quiet and unnoticed, while others were gruesome beyond words. As a wave of murder overtook the city's elite, your deeds swelled in infamy. Well before the armies arrived, no one in the bastard city felt safe in their homes, much less behind their walls. By the time Kairos' forces crested the horizon, the city was fearful enough to throw open the gates and welcome their new protectors. You see, we bring order. This wave of crime, it's so unfortunate. 
The bastard city settled into a new state of normalcy, with every tower displaying Kairos' banner. Your name was whispered alongside rumors of a decorated career to come. The armies divided into two fronts and migrated south. Tunon sent word that you were to join the next frontier of Kairos' conquest. He was a judge and overseer for the settlement of Lethian's Crossing. There was a war advisor with the armies advancing into the realm of Apex. Um... I think let's say on the war, you know? We can't, like, settle and help with administration just yet. We gotta make a name for ourselves. Imperialism ho. It is, pretty much. It's like the... It's the, um... Oh, what is it? The Street Fighter the movie. Where M. Bison has that big speech about, like, I just want to create the perfect genetic soldier. Not for power. Not for evil, but for good. <laughs> <laughs> the mountain nation of Apex, ruled for generations by the queens of House Vendrian, stood at the heart of the tears. No army could bypass the landlocked realm without leaving their flank exposed to attack. By the second year of the war, the disfavored and scarlet chorus had pushed deep into the tears. Elements of both armies were dispatched to conquer Apex. Tunon assigned you to accompany them, tasked with bringing Kairos' law to the territory, as well as keeping an eye on both armies. Um, deal with mages, or do battle? I think deal with mages? A school of water mages loyal to the Tears have imposed a substantial threat. The disfavored wished to annihilate the school, while the Scarlet Chorus insisted on capturing the mages wishing to learn of their craft. Uh, yeah. We gotta take them alive and learn what they know. Like, you can always learn more about magic. Though countless lives were lost, taking the mages into custody, the Scarlet Chorus praised your name as they dragged the beaten elders of the school to the voices of Narat's tent. As a wave of screams and incoherent pleas reached their crescendo, the Scarlet Chorus soldiers outside cheered for their Archon. The disfavored adjourned to their camp in grim silence. Claiming the chorus lacked the will and desire to fully wipe out all traces of the enemy school. Um, fate of an enemy captain or poisoning the well. This sounds like more skullduggery. Hoping to break the siege, Scarlet Chorus agents poisoned the Apex water supply in secret. Days later, uninformed disfavored scouts died of illness. Outraged by the failure of communication, the disfavored demanded that the chorus agents be turned over to them for punishment. Uh, punish the saboteurs or deny the charges. Uh, I mean, you know, that's really on them, you know. They should have expected we'd be up to some sneaky stuff. Just because we didn't tell them and they had no way of knowing. I don't see how that's our fault at all. You denied the complaint. Tragedies happen in war and the act was not targeted with intent that the disfavored... The reality was more honest than the satisfaction the disfavored so wanted. Your ruling swept the deceased soldier's unit into a rage, with nothing short of Graven Ash's intervention kept from escalating to violence. After tempers cooled over a period of weeks, the disfavored struggled to forge an open communication with their allies in the chorus. Their attempts were met with silence and disgust. Yeah, the thing is, like... You're super evil when you do conquer, but you're able to, like, uh, because you're basically, like, a wandering judge. And so you can come across things where, like, it's a dispute between people and you're like, hey, I'm one of these, like, I am judge, jury, and executioner people. And you can, like, with enough lore, you can, like, twist the law that's so obviously me meant to be, like, obey Kairos at all costs. It's like, no, let's have this be a little more humane. But yes, there's a lot of straight-up evil, which I kind of enjoy reveling in from time to time. <laughs> the Scarlet Chorus nominated you to negotiate with the Realm of Apex representatives and convince them to surrender, trusting in you to explain their inevitable defeat in terms they will understand. How did you orchestrate the surrender of the enemy? The law of the game, literally. Um, challenge the Queen, negotiate surrender. Um, let's negotiate surrender, you know? Bring them in as good citizens, and you know... Throw a... Oh. Ooh, taunting the queen into striking you under a banner of truce. You baited the queen of Apex into a duel and slew her fight. That's really tempting. But I've been favoring the chorus pretty heavily, so we're going to do, like, ne negotiate a surrender. Your former enemies were loath to part with their lands, but they were even more reluctant to continue a war they were losing at every turn. 
The Tearsmen are a stubborn lot, and despite their grim situation, it still took days of discussion and diplomacy to show them the madness of tenacity. On the third day of mediation, the rulers of Apex finally submit to your terms of surrender, putting an end to the war in the valley and freeing up Kairos' forces to march deeper into the Tears. The land of Apex finally rested in the hands of Kairos' forces. The Scarlet Chorus prepared to pause to revel in the victory, while the Disfavored prepared for the next fight, affording themselves but an evening's rest. Kairos' armies radiated out from the conquered citadel and worked their way across the tiers. The Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus aimed to dominate as much territory as possible in the coming year. Your distinguished reputation in Kairos' military left the choice of the net your next destination yours to make. See Stalwart, another highly defended capital. Its treasures, its knowledge, its secrets, or Azure. Um, dispatch the Arkan of Stone. Let's go. You know we've taken down a highly fortified enemy country before. Let's do it again. Year three of Kairos's conquest. I know it's a very simple presentation, but I love, like, this being displayed as, like, just, you know, pieces on a war map. It's so... it's minimalist, but there's still a style to it. I don't know, maybe that's just my inner visual novel novel gamer coming out where I can be, like, easily impressed <laughs> by what's basically just text. <laughs> the Realm of Stalwart was best known for its proud army, disciplined, courageous, and undefeated on their home soil. Skill and resolve made Stalwart a military power that Kairos' forces approached with due caution. With its southern position, Stalwart had been largely safe from the war, watching for two years as its neighbors fell to Kairos' forces. On the dawn of the Third Year of War, Kairos' forces were finally poised to invade the Stalwart Peninsula and subdue the Tyr's most vaunted army. Uh, accusations among Kairos' armies, or... Stealing supplies. This one sounds a little more interesting. Let's go with... let's deal with the setback. After a defeat at the hands of enemy defenders, the Scarlet Chorus accused the Disfavored of recklessness. The Disfavored claimed the Scarlet Chorus brought too few soldiers to cover their flanks. Both armies refused to march until you gave a ruling. Um... We need to throw the Disfavored a bone here, you know. Um, you know, Scarlet Chorus, you just gotta, like, you you, de you de uh, depended way too much on replenishing your ranks. You needed to be more prepared. The Scarlet Chorus were nonplussed to receive some censure, but aghast that the Disfavored would not share in the blame. Soldiers hurled venomous accusations your way, challenging your impartiality and wondering where justice could be found, if not in Tudon's Fatebinder. They argued that reputation should have no bearing on law. But they're valued members of the of the evil empire community. They've done so much for us. Fall of regrets. Uh, negative conscription. Ooh, we had some turncoats. Um, I like this. This seems more interesting. Fall of the regents. The armies of Kairos collaborated on the capture of an enemy leader. The Scarlet Chorus requested that she be interrogated by the Archon of Secrets. The Disfavored wished to display her corpse in battle. Since the Stalwart defenders refused to surrender, a gesture was needed to instill fear. Um... You know what? The Voices of Narat is our spy master. This seems a little better than, like, just learn all their secrets rather than just, like, we have your leader's head on a pike. They'll just be like, no, we must avenge her. Like so many enemy prisoners, the Stalwart Regent vanished inside the Voices of Narat's tent never to be seen again. Her screams were the only evidence that she had ever passed through camp, and those went on beyond what most considered possible. When at last she fell silent, the voices invited you inside. There was no region to be found. Only a map in which the voices had marked with hasty scrawls, marking supposed weaknesses in the enemy defense. The Edict of Storms. The Disfavored carved a slow, steady path into the heart of Stalwart and surrounded the enemy's massive fortress. With the bulk of their forces defeated, the enemy leadership retreated to their mighty fortress, content to wait out the war. The Overlord answered this impudence with an Edict of Storms on the peninsula, 
a devastating spell that would endure for as long as the cowardly hearts of Stalwart's leaders persisted in beating. Pleased by your efforts, Tunon deemed you the proper representative to deliver Kairos' edict. Aside from being given a three-day window to read the edict, you received no other instructions. Um, give no warning or warn the people. Um... Nah, we, we, we need to not give the enemy a chance to react. Yeah, the time for mercy was long gone. You agreed with the disfavored rationale. The leaders of Stalwart had refused honorable battle, and too many disfavored lives were lost in the campaign. Since the last regent refused to leave the keep, you would let him watch as his people suffered. Without hesitation or regret, you broke the seal of Kairos' Edict of Storms and read the Overlord's incantation. Clear skies darkened as you read the final words of the edict. A flurry of wind and rain whipped through the rolling plains and craggy canyons, turning rocks, uprooted trees, and hapless soldiers into hazardous shrapnel. Armed with a measure of foresight, you were able to remove yourself from the area before the storms grew more violent. Over time, enemy commander nearby communities told of cyclones consisting of thousands of soldiers worth of limbs, spears, armor, and skulls. What's more, the weather showed no sign of dissipating. Several units of disfavored, who fought the enemy in spite of the advancing storm, were caught up in the Overlord's magic. The few survivors regrouped and nursed their wounds. Their failure to topple the Stalwart Legion shamed them into believing the dead more fortunate. The name Stalwart fell from use. People took to calling it the Blade Grave, for the remade landscape festooned with the iron and bronze armaments of two once great legions. As Kairos' forces departed, you spared a glance back at the ruins of Stalwart, marveling at your work. You didn't have long to rest before Tunon called you into service once more. Nah, we're good. That's a sufficient number of war crimes. Now we can get into the actual game. The year is 431, <laughs> like and Kairos' invasion stuff. has shattered all major opposition. I thought about this. I the really did, Nate. The Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle, or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. The thing about doing this for, like, a Sin Day is the fact that, like, this game starts out so flavorful with so many choices, but right around the mid-game, there's a lot of, like, I can't call it anything else, just, like, padding. Like, if anyone's ever played the original Baldur's Gate CRPG, you know, there's a long stretch of the game where the story basically just kind of goes on pause where you're like, oh, hey, there's, like, some people causing problems, weird, and you spend, like, 30 hours just wandering around murdering things. Tyranny does that on, like, a lesser scale, so it's a game that could have done a lot more with, like, its story and dialogue, and what's there is great, don't get me wrong, but there's just so much combat. And, like, it's decent combat, but the focus is not always on the story, which is the bad, th which is the unfortunate thing. So, I felt there would be but too many streams where it's just like, extinguished. well, not we're just entirely. killing people again. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising. Murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus Garrison in a midnight assault. Yeah, exactly. Or like um, Knights of the Old Republic, how there is a very popular mod to just skip the first planet because it's just kind of nothing. I wish there was a mod to do that with like the middle portion of this game. And just like, just kind of give you a section where you can like pick a few of your choices. Because it's just, it drags the game down for me. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's Well to crush the resistance. But months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and There's discord still great paralyze in it. the Don't archives, get me wrong. we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. <laughs> yep. The Overlord no such is luck not here. amused. And Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers, or die. Or die. 
Kairos backs this threat with an edict, a magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. And to be fair, a lot of like, unless you were going one very specific path in this game, you can skip a lot of like the just grindy combat, but I would consider the best ending, you have to do everything. As you finally but... make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict, in any way that you can. But with only two minutes left that we actually get into gameplay, will we have a chance to do just that? Fake by Vimbrud, I presume. We've been expecting you. Kairos the Overlord be praised. When I heard the avalanche, I feared the valley was sealed with you on the other side. The disfavored warrior claps her gauntlet to her breastplate, the traditional salute of her legion. We were told the fate binder was coming, and though our commanders will not say why, it seems obvious. Graven Ash and the voices of Narat can agree on nothing. Least of all battle plans to wipe out the Oath Breakers. I trust you bring orders from Tunon that will break this deadlock. And one nice thing about this, where like they have all this lore and they don't want to just like exposition at you, you can hover over things and you'll get like more details that like your character really should know. Uh, glare silently. A nervous smile creeps over her as she waits for a response that doesn't arrive. I am asking questions beyond my station. She dips low, trembling as she bows. Uh, forgiveness, please. While you've traveled a long way, I won't keep you farther. I'm sure the Archons will want to hear from you at- Her voice falls silent, her attention snapping eastward with alarm. Did you hear that? More runners, third time this week. The Oathbreakers keep trying to send messengers through the mountains to gather help from outside the valley. She points over to the collapsed path by which you arrived. But they're a bit too late for that now. Come, let's show these Oathbreakers a good fight. Will do. Tyranny uses a possible... Yeah. I don't have time for the combat tutorial. Um, let's just start punching the man. And it's on a little bit like our real time system with like cooldowns and things. Right. But it's basically like, just push your buttons when you can. That and also like, I am not a good character to take on this dude yeah. because uh, he is wearing heavy armor and I am just punching him. So I do not much damage. <laughs> but we're getting him. We're getting him. Yeah. Titan's touch. Oh, yeah. Will I should do. buff myself so I do more damage here. Yeah. The thing about the build I picked from what I remember of the Will game do. is it starts out very weak. Yeah. But it's actually, it can be kind of great when you get a full party going. You can just have, like, just a well-oiled machine. Of a party setup, just like completely wrecking everyone in sight. So the combat can feel very satisfying once you get it going, and if you have a good idea for a build. Can't but... do that. What do you mean can't do that? Punch the man. Yeah. Or miss. That's fine too. It's really not. Please punch him to death so I can move on to the next game. <laughs> Dealing one damage to this guy. <laughs> That's one down. Let's check further along the path for more. But unfortunately, this is Shuffle Saturday, where we play a different game every 30 minutes. That's a little bit of a taste of uh, Tyranny. A flawed but very interesting game. I'd still recommend it, just you're probably going to have some frustrations if you want to approach the game in the way I do. So, we're moving on from that. If you came in during the middle of that, uh, this is Shuffle Saturday. A Whoops, that's the wrong button. There we go, much better. Stream where I play a different game every 30 minutes. I've got my game collection, plus a few hundred more, thanks to my friend Rapukin, loaded into this randomizer, hosted on the back of Lottery. And I'm go gonna roll um, a random game from that, and we'll play that for the next 30 minutes. If you don't like what comes up, or you think it's like too good, you want to see me try and roll for crap, and I have a lot of crap in this randomizer, just hit uh, exclamation mark of veto in the chat, and I'll burn one of those that you see down below, and we'll move on to something else. Next up shall be... 
<laughs> yes! <laughs> it's the second best Metal Gear game I've ever played. Secret Agent Barbie, Royal Jewels Mission for the Game Boy Advance. So I'll start to get that loaded up. And we can experience the glory of Robo Stealth Dog once more. <laughs> How? I don't know. RNG is a fickle beast. There are around 1600 games loaded up on here, but sometimes the randomizer is just like this one again. Uh, yeah, it, this is, this is like, this is not a meme. If you haven't seen me play this before, this game is actually quite good. And we beat this, like, with the help of some, uh, encores, I think, like, a month back or so on a past Shuffle Saturday. <laughs> it kind of is a mascot. Um, let me update the category. I have, like, just enough... I have just enough uh, Barbie games that they could be like kind of a running sub theme. So let's go over to this screen. Why is the size like that? Give me a second. I'll get it to cooperate a little bit here. There we go. We'll have sound in a minute. 30 minutes on the clock. Let's play some Secret Agent Barbie Royal Jewels Mission. Oh, I didn't save my password from before, so I guess we gotta do a new game. Someone is stealing the Queen's jewels. Who could this be? Kinda loud? Okay. Appreciate it. Let me ratchet it down to, like, here. Barbie, the Queen's jewels have been taken from London Tower. Camille, the evil mastermind, is our main suspect. Come back to HQ to start your mission. Is that better? Begin in England, on the tower roof. Barbie, your mission starts on the roof of London Tower. Get to the other side without being seen by the guards. Remember to use your gadgets to help you. Hi, Barbie. We must find all the secret files that Camille has taken. Collecting them all will open special surprises in the secret vault back at HQ. Alright, let's see. What gadgets do I have? I have the invisibility ring and the knockout gas. Which is a pretty good combo. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even think I have the invisibility ring. This game, this game, uh <laughs> Gollum wishes it was this game. <laughs> Let's see, how do I do the roll again? Is, do I have to like Yeah, that's right. I just hit A and I just roll until I stop. Good old secret agent Barbie, back here once again in my comfort zone. Honestly, like... <laughs> this game has no right to work as well as it does. Like, it's fun, and I mean, you know... I have, uh, I have some young nieces, like... If my... I don't know why my brother would be looking for, like, video game recommendations for what to buy his daughters for, like, a Game Boy Advance game, but I'd be like, buy him Secret Agent Barbie Royal Jewels Mission. You get to have some fun, like, stealth action, but it's all non-violent, you know? Barbie is not, like, you know, taking a snap of the necks of these guards. She just sneaks past them. It is still a tiny bit loud. Interesting. Okay. Let me ratchet it down a little further. I appreciate you letting me know, though. You know, I think um, GDQ is going on right now. I would love to see somebody do a speed run of this game. Because I bet you could see some crazy tech. I'd love to see what you have for me in the secret vault. Okay, just alternate outfit. I'll take it. In the Royal Tower. Barbie, you need to sneak by the guards and track down Camille. And keep a lookout for the secret files. So you still knock out gas and the one ring. But first, we have to do some hacking. Which are like, these are dumb, but they're fine, I guess. Access. <laughs> maybe, maybe. 
You know, I did actually look into, uh, I don't remember offhand what game it was. I think it was like a Bratz game for Game Boy Color that I played once and managed to beat in the 30 minutes that I, we get on Shuffle. And like, I was within a couple minutes, like even memeing around and not really trying to speedrun. I'm like a decent place on the speedrun leaderboards, you know. They weren't exactly like a very active speedrunning community, but like... That was one I theoretically could have done, just... I think you could probably figure out if you've been watching me for a while. I'm not big on getting, like, tied up on one particular game, so I feel like trying to become a speedrunner would drive me crazy. Just playing the same game over and over and trying to shave, like, a few seconds off my times, um, I feel like I would get bored. But it could be interesting to try a little bit, or do, you know... If anyone knows the YouTuber, uh, Doug Doug, um, what he does with speedruns could be interesting, where he does, like, I'd almost call them, like, anti-speedruns, where it's very much not a typical speedrun, because his chat is messing with him the whole time, and he takes, like, multiple hours longer than the people who actually have records. I, I could see myself doing something like that. Versus, like, actually trying to get a good time, which is... Then kind of counter to the point of speedrunning and... I don't know. I feel like I'd want a gimmick. But I don't have much of a, like, completionist urge. And my competitive nature is mostly just in my desire to, like, mess with people and hear their frustration. You know, just be a little gremlin. Um, and I can't get that live sort of reaction if I'm competing with speedrunner people who are, like, they have their own streams and stuff. So, that would... That would, lose, that would lose some of the appeal for me. Like, Pokeboomers is fine, because we meet up each week and do, like, our Pokemon Showdown matches and everything. I don't know. I don't know about speedrunning, though. I could give it a try one of these days, though. Ooh, a secret car. The London Sub. It's a subway train ticket. Camille must be at the station. Barbie, Camille's guards are on the train. Sneak past them to the other side of the station. What I really want to know is when I get, uh, the sneaking dog. Knock out gas, do some hacking. Because really, like, the knockout gas is, it's nice and quick, but it's less powerful than the dog. Though for speedrunning, you wouldn't want to really use the dog. You'd also want to do better at the minigames for six-year-old girls than I do. Got that one. I also like how apparently, like, Camilla's like, What? You only spotted, sp spotted Secret Agent Barbie for a couple seconds? You're probably lying to me, trusted henchman. Because it only shaves, like, a little bit off my alarm gauge? Health gauge? I don't remember offhand what the game calls it. Dude, oh, these are my least favorite types of hacking minigame. I mean, they're fine. I get them, but... 1408. That would be rough. I mean, what's the... Is that the any percent? Or is that 100%? Because maybe I could take a swing at the 100%? Maybe? Like, probably not, but... It's nice to... I can't get over this, really? Of course, I'd probably want to do things like, uh, you know, ignore the guards and just let myself take damage, but I don't. Any percent. Okay. Also, there are a few levels where I definitely, like, I remember getting turned around or a little bit lost in. Like, not horrible by my standards. Just horrible by, like, regular people standards, where it's like, you really should know how to navigate through this. But... I could, theoretically, fix that with some practice. Get him with this. And a little bit of this. Shit. Okay, that's better. I might have to look up that uh, speed run after I'm done with streaming tonight. I would love to see what kind of tech they break out. Knock out gas, and we're home free. Love 
to see what's in the secret bowl. Sure, Barbie cart too. Why not? The street chase. There's Camille. I'd better try to catch her. Curse these British drivers. Don't they know I need to collect the CDs that have been littered throughout on the highway? Give me that. Oops. I'm definitely going to crash in my pursuit of secrets. Yep. <laughs> oh, that is almost as fast. Never mind. I probably wouldn't stand a snowball's chance. Though it could be interesting to give it a try. You know, and, and if nothing else, it could be like a little free promotion for the stream. They're like, wait, I've never heard of this Vimbert speedrunner before. Is he French? And I'll be like, haha, not even a little bit. I'm so sorry, French people. Not really. Um, nah, I have nothing against the French. Oh, hey, I got all the discs. Now, if I can just stop driving like an idiot, I can catch up to her and end the mission. Ah, yes. Thrilling gameplay. Press up and down to avoid running into cars with slower and slower reaction times. The boatman tells Barbie, You said something about Imperial Emeralds. Camille must be off to China. Oh, there are only two people running 100%? Ooh. Hmm. This, uh... I might make this a goal or like a community dono or something. Because that could be interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna write this down so I don't forget. I, I will seriously consider this. What is in the secret... Oh, wait, no. What's in the secret vault? I like this bet. 80% is 24 people. Yeah, let's be... Let's be a small fish in a small pond over that, I'd say. Barbie, sneak through the city and find Camille's hideout. You can use your wrist glider gadget to get up onto some of the roofs. Oh, we have the doge. We have the doge. Victory is mine. They cannot fight the doge. Speaking of which, I can't remember if I've talked about this on stream. Nice voice crack there, grown man, as well. Um, I can't remember if I've talked about this on stream or if I've talked about it much at all, but, like... Um, I actually have a... Um, and I'm struggling to remember the correct name. Actually, I think it's Sinophobia. Um, I have a fear of dogs. It's, like, not severe. But if any dog of, like, even medium size is around me, like, I'm in a constant low state grade of panic. State of panic. It's, it's real bad. <laughs> I've had jobs before where they were like, what? That's not a real thing, Vimbert. You're making that up. Meanwhile, we're all going to bring our dogs to the office today. I'm like, ah, okay, that's fine. I have talked about it. Okay. Sorry. I couldn't remember. Just thought about that because Robo Dog, who is obviously like fine. And it takes something like, you know, the zombie dogs in like Resident Evil for like a video game to trigger it. It's more like having the physical dog right there that like sets me off. But it's one that's, uh, it's something that's kind of unusual. I don't know, I have, I had a few weird phobias. Like, I had a fear of horses for a long time. I did manage to get over that one. Dogs, though, I'm like, I, there is one dog I've managed to eventually become cool around. And that's only because I, uh, that dog was my roommate's, who I lived with for, like, two years. And after, like, a year, I was like, okay, 
I can be reasonably sure this dog that still weighs like third, like 50 goddamn pounds or something is probably not going to maul me. It's, I don't know. It's just very, I always feel like a, like a jackass every time I bring it up and someone's like, oh no, no, my dog's very nice. And I'm like, that's great. But you know, I've had bad experiences with people who tell me that about their dogs. Also, you can't just like, just telling me a thing does not just get rid of uh, the phobia. That's that's not how it works. Come on, good pupper. Lead the guard away. Okay, that, uh, that didn't go so well. I've just taken a lot of damage for absolutely no reason. Dog posting that one morning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, pictures of dogs are fun. Like, I don't see a picture of a dog and freak out. Like, I might think, like, oh my god, I know that dog would set me off. But, like, it is just literally being in the same physical area as a dog that gets me. Because my brain is just like, that dog is going to jump up on me. He's going to knock me to the ground. Like, my throat's going to get ripped out something. All these things that are just, like... Thinking about it is insane, because I'm never dealing with, like, a wild dog or something. It's someone's pet. Who, so, you know, I can be reasonably sure it's not gonna act like that. Oh, wait, I needed to... I remember this disc. I need to use the momentum and... Yeah! A little bit of movement tap. The people who I feel really bad for are, um... Oh, I knew the term for this, too. Because Persona 3, um... Aurylophobes? People who have a fear of cats, because, like... Cat- like, I love cats, but cats are assholes. Like, I'll freely admit that. Cats are big old jerks. How do I get over there? Oh, wait! Of course! I know. The tech. The tech with the good pupper. good pupper tech. I would love to see what's in the secret vault. <gasps> A skin for the doggo? I... I don't think I got any of these when we beat the game. New doggo skin just dropped. Barbie, Camille has some of our secret files in her hideout. We need you to find them, but watch out for her guards. Okay. Come one, come all. This doggo will show you something amazing. Gather around. You cannot afford to miss this amazing opportunity. Here's how you can build wealth without any risk to yourself. I'm remembering like the old gags. This is just what Secret Agent Barbie is gonna be every time. The get rich quick scheme dog. The did I have any other gags for this game? I don't know. <laughs> nah, I mean, we... We have a pet channel in the Discord, right? Or am I mixing that up with another one? Uh... But yeah. You know. It's all good. Oh, wait, no. He's right there. Go, go, go. Just go. Just go. Just go. What could actually be a really fun challenge run for this game would be trying to beat the game without, like, taking any damage. Like, a hitless run. You know, in so much as you can pull that off in this game. Come one, come all. Come behold the fabulous product that you can't live without. Here's how you... Uh, good old scammer dog. I think that's kind of why, like, I, uh... 
Because, you know, I've started my own individual Discord now, where basically it just exists to at everyone when I'm going live and post my stream schedules. It's like, no need to worry about establishing, like, social norms and stuff. Like, I'm sure that's probably a little disappointing to some people, but I'm like, listen, Twitch can be kind of bad about showing people when I'm going live, so fine, I'll do it myself. Oh, he cannot draw heat off of me. Oh, but he can collect that disc for me. Perfect. I keep going back and forth on whether that's, like, an intended game mechanic or not. Because sometimes it feels like yes, and other times it's like, no way. This is, like, an exploit. As far as, like, collecting them when he's rocketing back up towards the ceiling. Oh yeah, and, uh, I ain't gonna plug it myself, but, uh, you know. If you're not- if any of you would like to be a member of that Discord, where I just ping people when I go live and do basically nothing else with it, um, that is part of the Discord command. Alright, come one, come all, gentlemen. Here's how to get all the ladies to love you and be all over you, Garen. Oh, scammer doggo, you've struck again. Haha! See, so can I. Can I get there from here? Yes. Though I think there are a few particular breeds of dog that I would, uh. I feel like I might be okay around, although I don't think I've been around that many of them, like uh, a Shiba. Though I've heard that they can be kind of aggressive, but like they're just, they're so cute that I feel like I would be okay with them. <laughs> that is okay. That is perfectly okay, Nate. Social anxiety is totally a thing. I know it may not seem like it, but I get that too. If I'm, like, IRL and I'm talking to, like, a, per a person that I haven't met before, I'm awkward as hell. Uh, like, I think, um... And I mean, this kind of applies to, like, voice chats and stuff too, I think. And I feel bad about this in retrospect, because we're such good homies now, but I think the first, like, mm, dozen or so times I talked to Repu, like, we were in a voice chat with a mutual friend, like, hanging out, playing some games, then the mutual friend would leave, and there would just be, like, five minutes of, like, awkward silence between me and Repu, and I'd be like, alright, I'm, I'm gonna go, man. Because <laughs> I was just like, yeah, how do you say words? So, I get it. And I, no, wait, I didn't collect all the discs, did I? Purposes, 100% run ruined. Camille is going to steal the Imperial Diamonds. Barbie must cross the Golden City to find the palace. Oh, right, the robots. I can't uh, distract these guys with a doggo. So these guys I do not like. Though they are a little easier to just speedrun tactics around. Let's see, is there a thing down here? Yes. So let's use intended game mechanics to just grab that real quick. Speaking of intended game mechanics... <laughs> I love how exploitable the stealth doggo is. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I always feel like I'm getting away with something. Because you can just wander in here, don't have to deal with any detection, and just grab the thing. It's so simple. Oh, wait, I needed to... Yeah, that's fine. Damn. What I would love to do... Someday... Probably... Yeah, probably. I'm sure there's all kinds of crazy tech with the dog. 
I'm getting too impatient. I'm, I'm dreaming of the future speedrun stream. I don't know, maybe I could have that be like a follower or a sub goal or something. That might not be enough, because I've already said it's a thing I want to do anyway. Can I, like... Yeah, let me just restart this one. Because, yeah, it doesn't... Hmm. I'm seriously going to look up that speed run and, like, see if we have, like, routing and stuff for it, or if there's enough of that for 100%, but still... If there's only, like, two people running 100%, then all I would have to do is just make sure I get everything, and I can be on the leaderboard in no in number three. And that could just be this come-from-behind, uh... <laughs> Secret Agent Barbie Royal Jewels Mission Speedrunner that no one's ever heard of before. It's like, I could distract the guards, or I could just run right past them. I'm sure there's a lot of that, too. And a slip through here. And a slip through here. Slip through here. Slip through here. I wonder if the any percenters have to deal with, like, getting bad RNG on, um, those puzzles at all, with how they're laid out. Because it feels like they're randomized. At least a little bit, or they're like a couple different patterns. I have no idea if that's true, but. Secret ball, bring it on. Ooh, that's a good doggo skin. Unironically, I'm into it. The palace. Great, I made it to the palace. I'd better make sure the guards don't see me. They're like, hey player, do you remember this is a stealth game? This is a stealth game. Come and behold the mysterious orange doggo. Yes, come one, come all. Now that you're here, I... And really, like, I do more of that than I strictly need to, but I just really like messing around with the dog's mechanics. <laughs> it's a fun game feature to use and abuse. From dust. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. 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 <laughs> also, I want to see. No. Interesting. You can't collect healing items with a robo dog, but you can collect collectibles, which is fascinating. That they would bother to make that kind of distinction. Also, look. I've screwed up the puzzles once again. Who could have predicted this? I had some tea before a stream, and I feel like it's, uh, got my throat drying out a little quicker than it normally would be. Part of that's probably also, uh, not having streamed since Tuesday. My vocal cords have had a couple minutes to, like, be not used to my usual never-shut-the-hell-up style. <laughs> They're like, ah, good, a break. Wait, no, Vim, no! <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did that um, in the Shuffle Saturday stream where we beat the game, but I'm not positive. It feels like it would be like a time loss to try and line that up though, versus just getting each one individually. Can you cross into that little screen there, dog? No. Unfortunate. Is this... Yeah, this is just for that. Got it. So they just sprint past this guy. Best secret agent ever. Use the doggo to get that. Oh, okay. I do have to go down there. Unfortunate. So let me try and line up uh, multiple blocks with one laser. But with only two minutes left, will I be, uh, be able to pull this off? Now on that one, I couldn't even line up one. Truly a shameful display. Mm. Wait for it. Wait 
for it. Ah, damn. Okay, I made an attempt. Let me see if I can line up two with this one. They're not really... Mm. Yeah, the timing is kind of off. Yeah, with my scroll speed, this ain't gonna happen. Unfortunate. Too so sad. Well, that's embarrassing. As the professional Secret Agent Barbie Royal Jewels mission player that I am, this is truly a black mark on my record, and a sad day for the entire community, that I might run out of lives on this very simple puzzle, and have that be the end of the Secret Agent Bar Barbie segment. <laughs> Damn it. Curse you low spatial intelligence. You've come back to bite me for the latest time. But, this is Shuffle Saturday, where we play a different game every 30 minutes. That was a little bit more of uh, our delightful, beloved Secret Agent Barbie Royal Jewels mission, but we're moving on to a new game now. Uh, I need a couple minutes to re-up on my water, so I'm going to open up a prediction if you want to gamble on which system will come up next with your garlic coin. And uh, I'll be back in just a couple minutes. Hope you'll stick with me. Okay, I return. Sorry about that. I swear I've just been like continually thirsty for the past couple days, so been chugging down a lot of water lately. I don't know if maybe I'm just like eating stuff that's too salty or what. Um anyway. Next up shall be Inscription for Steam. You know what? Sure. This is one where I kind of wrestled with, like, making this a full series, but I've never actually played it before. I've seen people play it in little bits and pieces here and there, but I don't know much beyond it, beyond, like, some kind of meta horror card game game. So I'll set that to downloading, and um, Steam will allegedly have that ready for me in... Four minutes? Not sure I trust that, but we'll see. 
if you'd rather we go for something else, just let me know with a veto. Otherwise, we'll be playing that game. I don't feel like I got this as a gift from somebody, but I don't remember, because I don't think... No, this is not a repo game. This is one that I own myself. So I don't remember if I picked this up or if someone gifted it to me. I have a few games like this where it's like, they're games where I'm like, man, I've heard great things, but I've just not gotten around to playing them. I mean, you know, that is kind of what Shuffle Saturday is about, getting to those games that I've just not gotten around to touching. Phrasing? Whatever. Um, again, this is a game I have not opened up before. Let me try it on the general purpose PC screen. So I'm like relatively unspoiled on this and would prefer to remain that way if we have anyone in chat who knows this game. Okay, seems like it captured. Um, oh, okay, it doesn't like alt tabbing. Lovely. Well, 30 minutes on the clock. Let's play some Inscription. Revolver okay. Digital. Time to figure out what's on this game. I didn't know there was voice acting. Really? <laughs> New game is not an option for some reason. Oh, do I have to, like... Okay. Dialogue text speed, please be at maximum. Um... Good. Fine. Do not pause when window not focused, just in case I need to tap out. I think the audio's okay, based on what I'm seeing in my OBS levels. Let me know if I need to turn it up or turn it down. Very well. I guess I have to continue. Probably part of the horror aspect, I guess. Interesting approach to... Hey, what's up, dude? You know, my buddy Valen um, has talked about playing some horror games soon. I wonder if he would consider this one. Another challenger. It has been ages. Perhaps you have forgotten how this game is played. Allow me to remind you. Because you're definitely evil, right? Play the squirrel card. Now play your stoat. What is... Oh. Telling me controls. Stoats cost one blood. Sacrifices must be made. Okay, so Yu-Gi-Oh. An honorable death. Play the stoat. Wolves require two sacrifices. You don't have enough. Ring the bell to end your turn and commence combat. Your stoat stands unopposed. The number on the bottom left is its attack power. One. Your stoat dealt me one damage. I added it to the scale. You win if you tip my side all the way down. Like this. My turn. Your stoat stands in the way of my coyote. My coyote dealt two damage to your stoat. That means your stoat's health is two less. Okay, so it's not Magic the Gathering. My cards don't get their health back at end of turn. If a creature's health reaches zero, it dies. It's your turn again. You may draw from your deck, or you may draw a squirrel. Um... Don't get ahead of yourself, you need... Yeah, but do I want what's in my deck, or do I draw a squirrel? It feels like a squirrel would be good, so I could sacrifice it and the stoat for a wolf, right? Give me a squirrel. How dull. Shut up. Squirrel. And how can you see the, like, 
Okay, three, two. Nice. Wait, what do you mean, ha, huh, hey, stop? Why did the card talk to me? Fear not, the beast is sacrificed, but not removed from your deck. Its suffering was real, but you will see it again. Oh well, maybe you should have uh, spoken up sooner, little stoat. Because you are learning, I will pass. Again, the choice. Draw a random card from your deck, or the certainty of a squirrel. Give me a rando. You are lacking sacrifices for that creature. Yes, but... Oh, if I press S again, I can... Okay, so the river snapper is just a straight-up wall. Okay, so... Wolf, just mess him up. Three damage dealt, three weights on the scale. Pass. Take a squirrel. Play a squirrel. I see no reason to do anything else, so Wolf, mess him up. What? Oh, you've won this match. I was like, why does he just get to have to not get added to the scale? They won't all be so easy. Okay. Let me recall your story. Oh, yes. You were lost deep in the forest. A single path revealed itself. We slay the spire? Two denizens of the forest approached you tentatively. Can I... Oh. The undying cat sacrificing the poor beast does not kill it. The caustic adder. Damage from its poison bite is always lethal. Only one may grace your paltry deck. Um... I'll take the cat. Like, the adder's death touch ability... Sorry, I'm gonna be talking in Magic the Gathering terms, because that's the TCG I know the best. Um... The death touch does seem really helpful from the adder, but unlimited sacrifices from the cat sounds super broken. Behold the rule book. Any lives when a card breaking bearing the sigil of sacrifice does not perish. Cool. Another creature joins your caravan. Some of the creatures of the forest seemed willing to follow you. You came across an abandoned sack. You found a squirrel in a bottle. Break in case of emergency. And have a second. Another useful implement. I'll allow you to tip the scales with it. Three is as much as you can carry. Okay. You were ambushed while crossing some rough terrain. You sacrificed me while I was sleeping. It was the right play, I get it. Maybe you'll help me? Take your turn. Play along for now. You may now see my moves ahead of time. Fledgling. A card bearing this sigil will grow into a more powerful form after one turn on the board. Okay, that sounds bad. Um, I probably want my boulder there for free blocking. Uh, why don't I play the squirrel here? And then I can tack into a cat here where it will be safe behind the stump. And... Do I want to save my squirrel? He said three is as much as I can carry. Need I remind you, your items may help. I think I'll grab a squirrel. Just so I can get something going this turn. Um, let me... Oh, wait, the stoat is only one sacrifice. Um, right. Well, it's like he said, I am still learning. Oh, I can't sacrifice the boulder. That makes a lot of sense. Sack the cat, sack the squirrel. Put the river snapper there. And deal some unopposed damage. 
Mind the ambitious wolf cub, it ages swiftly. So what has he got going? That airborne will strike an opponent directly. Okay, so I'll take some damage from that, but my river snapper will kill it pretty quick. So that particular problem will solve itself. Um, I think I want to draw a squirrel to get the stoat out so I can start chunking down that stump. Oh, the cat. I need to remember the decisions I just made like two seconds ago. Here we go. Okay, getting some free damage in. The airborne bat flies over your creatures to attack directly. Ha! My bat flew right over your river snapper. But now it's going to die. Ooh, I can play a wolf of my own. So, I can sacrifice... Yeah, uh, next turn, I can sack the cat and the squirrel that I play on where the boulder is to play my own wolf, and that'll kill his wolf before it actually deals any damage to me. So, for this turn, I need to just hold tight. Wait. Oh, that was just his turn. I was like, wait, why did he get a combat? Um, yeah, give me a rando. Another wolf, that's fine. Sacrifice, sacrifice, play the wolf. And bring him down. All I have left are squirrels. Um, I could sack the stoat. Actually, I could sack the river snapper. Yeah. Cat. River Snapper, get out there, Wolf. You're better for damage. Just pile it on. You prevailed and tricked onwards past the now bloody terrain. What do we got? The Young Wolf Club. It grows into a wolf after a single turn. The meek sparrow, an inexpensive, if feeble, flying creature. Hmm. I feel like... Hmm. I feel like for the deck I'm building, the wolf cub... The wolf cub's main draw is, like, it's just a cheaper way to get out a wolf. But I already have a cat to help with that. So, I think I want a Sparrow, just in case I need evasion. If there's anything more like last game, where he had, like, those stumps and I was just left just smacking it for three turns, the Sparrow just lets me circumvent that. So, yeah, give me the bird. You stumbled into some strange stones in the mist. You were compelled to choose a worthy sacrifice, one that will be lost forever. What? I just... Well, I don't want to lose my cat, so... I guess I'll sacrifice the bird? You looked upon your menagerie and selected a worthy host. The stout says pick me, so... Sure? Do it. What an honor. Oh! So the stout has flying now. Okay. So it's kind of like combining cards. Okay, that's neat. A ghastly skeptic spectacle, but the soul of the sparrow now lives in the stoat. Okay, that was great then. Oh, then I could have given something else, the cat's undying ability? That could have been cool. Ah, it's fine. There are many lives, I think it is. Behold my totem. It inscribes my canine cards with the airborne sigil. 
Well, that seems like some bullshit. He's completely insane. You see that, right? No care for the rules. Pathetic, really. Enough. Only keeps me around. To watch me suffer. Bat and a flying coyote. Okay. I can squirrel into cat into stoat. And take down the coyote, I guess? Hmm. I'm, I'm gonna take a damage no matter what I do, unless I fling my cat in the way. Or what if I take a squirrel... If I take a squirrel this turn, then I can squirrel into squirrel into cat into stoat, and then be set up. Wait, yeah, I take a squirrel, and then I I sacrifice one squirrel for the cat. I play the second squirrel. Um, I sacrifice the cat for the stoat. The cat stays out. I sacrifice the squirrel and the cat for the river snapper. I can take out both his creature. I can be ready to take out both his creatures um, on the next round. Yeah, this is great. Oh, you cannot... Well, shit. So much for that. Um... Yeah, I guess I, guess I have no choice but to play the stout. Um... A little worried he's gonna continue buffing up his, like, wolfy boys, so... Back on the board. My totem has granted my coyote the power of flight. Wait, flying doesn't block flying? Well, that doesn't seem fair. Whatever. Give me a squirrel. Let's get this done with. Sacrifice, sacrifice. The river snapper out there. Wipe out his dudes. Wait. Wait, how do I... Wait, hang on. Oh, I... Because I put the stoat there, it's not striking the creature in front of... Well, that's bad. I misunderstood how the ability worked. Um... Okay, I can at least get the wolf out and start getting some more damage in, I guess. If I sack the river snapper, which seems like a good move at this point, because I've managed to screw this up and I turned it into a complete damage race. Which I'm starting to claw back a little bit. Like, I did not place my stuff well. Yeah, inscription. This is the first time I've played it. Give me another rando. It's another wolf. Um. I think I have to sack the stoat just to stop his coyote. Otherwise, I'm I'm gonna take too much damage, I think. Yeah, sorry, stoat. Wow, seriously? Yes, yeah, seriously. I owe you nothing. Okay, another coyote. Oh, but now I have no more. This is a bit awkward. Whatever. Wolves! You're two damage away from winning. Keep drawing squirrels, I guess. Pass again? I thought I was already gonna win. Impressive. You may yet survive this ordeal. Also, the chat is in absolutely the wrong position, given where dialogue pops up. Let me shift you guys down here. Knock on wood. Ooh, choice of three. The flighty elk, it moves after attacking. Interesting. Another cat. The watchful bullfrog, it leaps in the way of attacking flyers. Okay, so it has it has reach, basically. Um 
I feel like with wolves, I have a lot of two... I have a decent amount of two-sack creatures. And I'm not super fond of its moving down ability, so I think I'll take the frog. This is another sacrifice grave. I don't know what the campfire does, though. Have I had that before? Let me try the campfire. I'm experimenting. You came across a small group of survivors. Faces shrunken from starvation, they huddled around a campfire. They looked upon your group of creatures and beckoned. Come, warm one of your creatures by the fire, one said. Warm it by the fire, enhance its power, said another. You noticed one of the survivors wiping drool from their mouth. They say enhance its power, but it sounds like they're just going to eat it. Uh, I'm kind of tending towards, like, offensive strats, so maybe... Maybe I get rid of the river snapper if this does indeed kill it. If it is actually a power-up, um, that'll help it be more, like, worthwhile. So, sure. Turtle. Oh, okay. They didn't lie. The fire warmed the poor river snapper, enhancing its power. One of the survivors reached toward it. Another gnashed their teeth. Without a word, you pulled the river snapper away from the fire and left. Okay, that did... Okay, so I kind of knew what was going to happen. Kind of. There's a way out for both of us. It's somewhere in this foul cabin. Be silent or I will tear you to shreds. Okay, so I have a tree that's going to block this. Oh dear god, that person is stupid powerful. I have nothing that's going to be able to stand in that thing's way. Um. Okay. That's... That's a problem. Um, if only I could move that damn tree over. For the moment, let me go squirrel into cat. This is just consigning the stoat to death, though, isn't it? I gotta say, I can't be taking four damage. Sorry, Stoat. This spot, you sure? Yup, it'll be fine. Don't worry about a thing, buddy. Um. Good God, yeah. How do I deal with those damn bears? Um. I could just. Oh wait. Well, no, that'd kill the wolf. I think I'd just draw a squirrel and just have it as a chump block. To stop the grizzly in its tracks for this turn? This is not really a viable long-term solution, but I need, like, my river snapper. Um, so it can, like, tank and attack, attack back, tank and attack, and then I can kill it with a wolf, I guess? There's another one coming out, and I'm also not doing damage in the meantime until the sparrows... God, this is really bad. I'm gonna lose this match. Um... I do have my squirrel in a bottle as well. Um, yeah, give me a squirrel. And if all I'm doing is chumping anyway, I need to start putting at least a little heat on these grizzlies, I guess. 
don't like this strat, but it's the best one I got. Ow. Yeah, that's bad. It's real bad. So I can get the bullfrog out, stop one of the sparrows. Um, river snapper. It's probably going to be a case of too little too late, though. Yeah, I'm going to take 8 damage to the face and lose. Uh, what happens if I use this? A well-earned point of damage. I didn't think you would really do it. That's all it gets me? A point? Well, that sucks. And I'm definitely dead now. You lost. Using this as a learning opportunity may be the only way to mitigate my disappointment. Get up. Get up from the table. Fetch me the candlestick from atop the barrel beside the door. Interesting. No, Mr. Squirrel, give me the knife. I desire the knife. You know, definitely not with which to stab the... What's up, dude? Can you see over there okay? You need to bring a little light over into your corner? Interesting. Well, let me just do this for now. Bring it here. Here you go. Or do I need to, like, sit back down at the table again? Hmm. I need to figure out the time from people in Zozo. Oh! Now sit back down. Okay. Let me explain something to you. That was one of the two mistakes you can make here. If you make another, I must sacrifice you. Now, where were we? Okay, so that seems like just a get-your-ass-kicked fight. That's fine. Gotta tutorialize you on the live system. Mm. What is that pin? Is that meant to show... You can get up at any time between games? Interesting. The monstrous grizzly, its form, speaks enough of its efficacy. Grizzly is really good. I think I... Hmm. Honestly, Adder might be good just to... Yeah, if he starts busting out crap like grizzlies, I think I need a death touch in my deck. Because Grizzly is great, but it's three sacrifices. That's so many. And some of these games start me out with terrain, which I can't sacrifice. So I could, like, get up now? Huh. Fuck. Boop. I wish to boop this loot. Okay, fine, I'll sit back down. Where were we? But with only two minutes left, will I have the chance to get much further? A rock may get you out of a hard place. Its bleeding yields three blood, if you can ignore the bleeding. Okay, encore noted. Let me tack another 15 minutes on. I certainly don't mind. Choose one. So, Black Goat would probably be the smart play if I grabbed a Grizzly, but I didn't. So, I think I, I think a Squirrel in a Bottle is the correct play here. 
because like the sense I'm getting from how these game flows are going is that um oh also I forgot to end the prediction good lord someone should have yelled at me <laughs> Uh, Boulder is fine for just like a blocker, but that's only going to delay the inevitable, and it seems like the usual way to actually win at these is going to be like just putting more damage out on the board, which means getting my more powerful cards, which means I want the squirrel to just be another sacrifice, because it seems like I'm always starting my starting hand with a cat. Which is good. Like, I always have a squirrel and a cat. Which is a strong little start. A gust from this may lift your creatures into the air. If only for a turn. Oh, that's right. I have an inventory of three. Um, well, the pliers only dealt one damage, so that's that item kind of sucks. Let me take the fan. And then I... How does these three, I guess, the boulder? Because the other two seem very situational. Feeling overburdened enough with a full three items you carried on. Boss fight? The trees seemed to close around you as a chill mist descended. In the distance, you could hear the clinking of metal on stone. A hobbled figure stood in your path. Hit! Towards the brass band! Pack Mule is just gonna be a roving blocker. And then a coyote. Okay. We've got. This is not a great starting hand unless I just go full aggro and burn one of my and burn my squirrel in a bottle already. But that seems questionable. I think I'd rather. Hmm. Squirrel into bullfrog just to get some damage out on the board, I guess. I'll take two from him, which means I'll already be behind. But theoretically, next turn, I can just get a squirrel out, and I can sack um, the bullfrog and that guaranteed squirrel for a wolf. Take out the cat. Or no, probably a river snapper, because that thing's nice and bulky. And just take out his coyote, and then it'll get blocked by the pack. Yeah, I think this is the play for now. It'll put me a little bit behind in the damage race, but I think it's the best move I've got available. Okay, he's bringing out another coyote, which is annoying. Hmm. Also, when the pack mule gets blocked, it moves over. Like, it's gonna, like, loop around, I assume, to go here. So, yeah, give me that guaranteed squirrel. Squirrel out here. Hmm. Yeah, give me River Snapper. I think I squirrel into squirrel in a bottle so I can get the wolf out to kill the coyote. That feels like the best move I've got. Because I don't want to get behind here. Squirrel in a bottle. Sack, sack. Wolf. I won't deal any damage this turn, but I'll remove his ability to do anything further. And his play gets blocked by his stupid pack mule. Which is great. Um, give me this. Cat. Perfect. I can take a squirrel next turn and get the cat tech set up. Oh! That nabbit my mule! Okay, we'll 
Opus down, but now I have all these options. Uh, creature opposing card bearing the sigil loses one power. That's interesting. I don't know if it's that good, though. Struck. Oh, okay, reflective damage. That's neat. And only one sacrifice. Am I... Is a concat into squirrel into porcupine? Which can kill the coyote with its attack and have me set up for a bit of defense. Um, but I probably want to work towards the wolf, so... Wait, no. I want another unique one. He's doing the prospector again? Easy boss. The mule's key. Yeah, I already figured that out. Do you think I'm a goddamn casual stout? You probably do. This is my first turn time playing the game. It's understandable. Kill him! A bowl. Uh, empty space would be struck. A card bearing the sigil will move to that space to receive the strike instead. Wait, what? Would an empty... Oh, so he just jumps in the way to block, regardless of where he is. Okay, that's... smart. And annoying. Um... I feel like I'm pretty good with what I got. Let me grab a squirrel in case I need to blitz out a wolf or something. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I can get rid of my boulder, so I just have to pass and block some damage. The adder, nice. Um, hmm. Maybe I got out the wolf just because the name of the game is Damage while I've got this opening. Yes. Sack cat, sack porcupine, get the wolf out. Oh! You can do it twice! That's... mildly infuriating. Whatever, you're done now. I hope you didn't think it would be that easy! Of course not. You had two candles. There's gold in them cards! What? The... You... G -g gold! I've struck gold! Well, shit. What the... How did... Can I even sacrifice these? Bloodhound. Uh, when opposing creatures place opposite to an empty space, a card... Okay, that's similar. That's fucking annoying. Um, I'll definitely want another squirrel then. Um, so I just have to pass and let him kill these stupid gold nuggets? Annoying. Yeah! It has three health. Um, best I'm gonna be able to do is a one sacrifice creature. The stone would get me a little damage for a couple turns. I guess. Man, I don't know. Okay. Ow! Okay, that adder is good because it's gonna. Oops! I did not realize spacebar would pass. That's on me. Okay, so I can squirrel into squirrel into wolf and then squirrel into skunk. Damage is another creature. So I could maybe have the skunk just tank the adder because the adder won't be able to deal damage. Um, so first, squirrel... Squirrel, wolf, sacrifice, sacrifice, put him at, uh, opposite there. Squirrel, sacrifice, skunk. Get him! All I have left are squirrels, which is awful, but whatever. 
I got my more wolf doing unblock. Oh, that was enough. Allow me to light your candles once more. I won't be killing you quite yet. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't too hard. Achievement unlocked, Miner's Bane. You're the first in a while to overcome a boss. As a reward, you are granted an opportunity to select a rare case. Choose carefully. The uninspiring Gek. Perhaps you can find a use for it. See, this seems like it would be the card to just, like, get abilities on and keep powering it up at campfires because it doesn't cost any sacrifices. Poor abandoned child. It does not die when sacrificed. But do you have the heart to try? So that's just a cat. A largely unimpressive specimen. But it does grow. Can I see what it grows into? I'm intrigued by this. But I do see promise in the Gek, because I don't need any sacrifices to get it out, and it's just immediate, immediate damage. Um, I already have an infinite sacrificer in the cat. Strange larvas, look. If anyone in chat knows this game, is the strange larva, like, really good? Huh. Because otherwise I'm tempted to get the gek, just like... It starts as a 0-3, you think so? Okay, then I am intrigued by this thing. I am intrigued. I'll take it. So the game flow is kind of like Slave Aspire, just with this, like, escape room type segment. Which is an interesting twist. With the sound of the Prospector's pickaxe still ringing in your ears, you carried onwards. If you can play it early. That is the thing. Hmm. The rank smell of rot and mold permeated the humid air. Every step forward was answered by some nearby slip or slither. You tread cautiously into the wetlands. The inviolable beehive. When it is attacked, you will draw a bee. One power, one health, airborne. Ah! Ah, the elusive otter. It submerges itself during my turn. Or a river snapper. I like the stealth aspect. That's really interesting. Uh, three minutes, Nate. That's with Encore taken into account. I like the thought of the river otter, because it can just, like, dive down... And, like, come back up and, like, maybe snipe a kill. The beehive just seems like it's going to get hit once by, like, almost anything and just grant me a crappy flyer. So I'm going to take the otter. And... Hmm. It does seem like a decent stopping point. I am enjoying myself. The strategy aspect is neat. I I can see why people got crazy into this game. A group of starving survivors stood around a dying campfire. There is room for a creature around the fire, one said. The warmth will enhance its health, said another. One of the survivors said nothing at all but could not stop licking their lips. No way! So what do I want to have a little bit more health? Hmm. Maybe the adder because of its death touch properties? 
because it could maybe get a death touch off twice. Let me go with Adder. The health of the Adder was enhanced by the warmth. As one of the survivors began pulling a knife from their pocket, you withdrew. Beehive Kingfisher? Ooh, airborne and submerging. So I'm not going to be able to kill them, but I'll be able to get attacks through them. Interesting. Uh... Okay, squirrel, bullfrog, river otter, wolf. That's not a bad starting layout. I'd like to see if I can draw up to the cat, though. No drawing on the first turn. Don't you have enough? No, obviously. Um, River Otter is not going to be as useful here, so let me get out the Bullfrog. It at least has a little more health. I It feels like there has to be a chance for that, right? Also, wait. I thought... Oh, so it also can't... Oh, I see. So anything I put there is not going to last. That's annoying. <laughs> it's me! Great to have you, friend. So maybe I bust out the boulder and just stall there. Um, okay, another encore, very well. No objections from me. Mm. I just put the river otter out so we're just trading damage back and forth. Which doesn't seem great long term, but if I do otherwise, my bullfrog's just gonna die on his turn anyway. So... Oh, right, the kingfisher is flying. Right, I had the bullfrog there, that's what it was... Christ, I'm stupid. Well, that's a serious goddamn misplay on my part. Um, however, now I can squirrel into my flying stoat, which can circumvent the beehive, so he never gets any free flyers. <laughs> Total misplay. Uh, no, you just don't understand how the game is played, friend. This two damage per turn is starting to become a problem. Um. Hmm, that strange larva. Do I opt for equilibrium for now? I think I do, and next turn I squirrel into strange larva, and then whatever it grows into can maybe start to eat away at that stump. Yes. I don't... I'm not super fond of the strat, but, like, I'm stalling him out, because he can't play anything else, because I'm bypassing his beehive, and he's just at equilibrium with my damage. <laughs> I mean, I'm not exactly a TCG master, but I like to think I know a thing or two. I'll consider it. Pokeboomers is coming up, though, so that's... Probably going to be the main, like, sort of gameplay stream, and obviously I have to finish up Fuga too, but I'll consider it sometime in the future. Could be fun. But yeah, I did learn how to play Magic the Gathering at the age of, um... Oh. Okay, it's got to go through a few stages. Interesting. Uh, I learned how to play Magic the Gathering when I was seven years old. My older brother, who's, like, significantly older than me, like, six years old. Oh, look at that glorious boy! Mothman with an attack of seven! Thank you, Fox and Zed, if he was involved in that, for the tip on taking the strange larva. What a glorious lad! And he's just gonna fly right over that stump. Oh, that's just... That's the kill shot right there. I don't need to do anything else. <laughs> I'll draw another squirrel just in case he, like, does some kind of cheating. But as I understand the rules, 
I should, like, just... This is now a damage race. He can't win. Anyway, my older brother just wanted more people to play Magic against, and so he taught uh, me and my little brother, who was, like, five at the time, how to play Magic at some level, and he just spent years just, like, wiping the floor with us. Um, but that sort of, like, brutal training arc inspired me to become really good at the game. We three brothers all meet up when we can and uh, play some magic when we're all together for, like, family events. It's very nostalgic for us, and, you know, I can usually beat my older brother now, but he gets in a lot of practice over the summers. Anyway, that's kind of my TCG background. How brutal of you. You dealt me more damage than you needed to win. However, in my game, such feats are rewarded. To be precise, a tooth to keep for each extra damage dealt. The trapper may be interested in your spoils. I also played a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was a teenager, and um, as an adult I played a little bit of Weiss Schwartz, if anyone knows that game. It's a, it's an anime TCG. Um, the thing I think they're most known for now is having a crossover with Hololive. Like, usually their sets are just, like, cards adapted from an anime. Like, there's an Attack on Titan, there's a Haruhi Suzumiya, um, there's a Persona 5, actually, which was an interesting one. But they've done one with Hololive now. The Fervid Mantis, its praying claws strike both to the left and right. Ooh. River Snapper, River Otter. I do like the Fork Attack. It's very efficient. But that might not always lead me to what I want with cards with, like, the Beehive. Hmm. <laughs> hey, Inscription Devs. Give me a give me a little kickback here. <laughs> no, it's fine. If you do pick it up, I hope you I hope you enjoy it. It sounds like the difficulty ramps up, cause like uh I I've heard I Zed and Fox said they got uh walled in the second part of the game. I've heard that from some other people before. I've heard little bits and pieces here and there. I do like River Otter, but I could see it being disadvantageous sometimes. I hate that all these cards require sacrifices. I almost want to, like, can I get more, like, Gex or just get regular squirrels into my... No, because I have a guaranteed option to draw a squirrel. I guess that's the balancing aspect. Yeah, I guess I'll take a Mantis. Um, My deck's getting a little full. I think I do want to go for a Sacrifice. Because mm, I am out of items, though. Those items are really good if I get in a pinch. Yeah, I should restock while I have the chance. Uh, into these options, I guess the black goat. If you deem it necessary, you may cut up one of my cards with these. It's just a straight-up removal? Absolutely give me that. Why would I pick anything else? That's amazing. Okay, I got the strange larva out already. Okay, bullfrog. Um, so I can squirrel into cat into strange larva turn one, which is incredible. And I could get the mantis out, too. Mega murder cards and brute force it. True the left and right of the space across from it. So it doesn't strike across from it. So, like, if I put it here, it'd hit here and here. So I should leave, like, either of these center spaces open for it. So, let me squirrel into cat. And the strange larva will heal off the damage. But the bullfrog will block it when it turns into mothman, so... I don't think I want that. Strange Larva, Sacrifice the Cat. This is a great opening hand. Like, absolutely incredible. And I put the Mantis here. So, I can chip away at that Bullfrog. In the meantime, winning the damage race. Because I'll clock two damage on him turn one. Brilliant. Okay, that Adder's a problem. No, that Adder's gonna kill my Mothman. Oh. I might want to use my scissors because Mothman is such 
uh, screw you, I win card. But that might be worth it. Yeah. Oh, wait, I... Oh, he has to play... So there's no way to stop it? I'm just gonna lose my... My precious boy? Ugh. Oh. And I'm gonna lose my mantis, too. This is... Chip, this is gonna be really bad, actually. Um... Well... Well played to you, mysterious man. Fuck. You're playing a rattler, which is gonna come from my cat. <laughs> Lucky draw. Kind of, I guess. Um, fine. Snow just getting some attitude to him. I don't know if I like that. At least the adders don't deal much damage to me directly. Um, squirrels are not going to fix this. I need something from the deck. Here's good. I could black goat into adder and kill an adder? Yeah, I... Oh, but wait, the... Uh, oh, wait, no, I have a squirrel. I have a squirrel, we're fine. Sacrifice into black goat. Super inefficient sacrifice for adder. Ugh. Dumb. Still getting damage on him, at least a little. I think I'm just dead here. I think I'm just dead here. Yeah, I can cut up one of his No, this is this is death. This is just death. He did say he was gonna relight my candles, though. So, though. So, whatever. Yeah, we still have another life. How disappointing. Oh, but I still get to continue? Okay. You were stopped along the way by a trapper looking to liquidate his pelts. There was something uncanny about his appearance, but you were quickly distracted by his wares. Care to look at me pelts? Take a pelt free of charge. Oh, all the teeth. Uh -huh. See the quarty. So a golden pelt is just... So all these are free sacrifices, aren't they? They're basically just drawable... So the rabbit pelt is worthless, because it's just the same as a squirrel. But a wolf pelt or a golden pelt... I have how many teeth? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I can't get both, so I may as well go for the golden pelt. I wish I could grab a wolf pelt, but... Nah. I have to just content myself with that. How do I leave? Don't tell me it makes me spend all my cash here. Uh... Do I have to buy his pelts? Shit, I should have, like, bought two wolf pelts then. Yeah, how do I... I... Thank you for this fine pelt. I would like to continue on my way. already. Please consider me pelts. Yeah, I did. I bought everything. Yeah, you'll need more teeth for that. Oh! Okay. Thanks for your business. The man assured you of the value of the pelts. They appear to be useless in a fight. 
but he mentioned that the trader further down the path would reward you for them. But with only two minutes left, will I have a chance to meet up with this trader? Um. Hmm. Yeah, I think I want to. Well, what would I want to sacrifice on here? Maybe like a wolf, but. No, let me go. For, hmm. Let me go for the fire. I'm feeling fine with continuing. I wouldn't mind. Just bear in mind, um, chat is down to two collective vetoes since we've encored twice. The warm light of a campfire was a welcome sight. Though the ten hungry eyes around it dampened the greeting. Warm a creature by the fire, enhance its power, said one. Sure. Pick something else. Um. Ooh, the river otter getting an extra. The mantis. The mantis getting extra attack would be sick. Yeah, the mantis, 130%. The survivors were right about the flames. They had enhanced the creature's power. Spotting the few of the survivors drooling, you made a hasty retreat with your mantis. Not seeing any objections. We are at time. I'll linger brief. Okay. Third encore. That is... Right, okay. Thank you for adding 15 minutes. Why are you being cantankerous? Very well. Okay. I'm enjoying this very much, so glad you're feeling the same. Uh, goddamn kingfishers again. I can tech into the cat right away, who would be safe because the kingfisher would fly right over it. And then I can get out... Hmm. Nothing. But it would set me up for success on future turns. I, can get, I could get out a wolf to kill his coyote. So I'll start out a little on the back foot here. You know, this actually reminds me a fair bit about... Um, uh, Thronebreaker, um, the Witcher card game, uh, video game. Because they had lots of fights like this where you would start with, like, kind of event cards on the field to change the map, like, change how the game flow was, like, right out of the gate. And made it a little more puzzle-like than just, like, straight contest of power between the decks. So, similar vibes. Wolf. Sacrifice, sacrifice, get it out here to kill that damn coyote. So long as this doesn't kill me... Wait, what? Oh, shit. I thought I had more health. Alas, it is time for you to perish. Well, I moved a little too slowly. Damn, is that a game over? You aren't dead yet. This isn't purgatory. Though you may think of it that way. Before you expire, I must ask you a favor. I would like a memento. Your very own death card. It's quite plain at the moment, isn't it? We will work together to amend that. I want this to be the perfect memento of you. Here are some cards from your mediocre deck. We can put them to good use. Please, choose a card to draw the cost from. A cost of... three from the Rabbit Pelt. And another. This time I will use its power and health. The numbers. Obviously the wolf. Three power and two health from the wolf. Now choose a card from which we will extract the sigils. Ooh. Oh! Wait, so am I gonna start over and this card is gonna be in my starting deck so I can have a free 3-2 with an ability? Neat. 
so I can have it be a flying blocker. This is going to be more suited to an attacker, so I think I want this stealth ability from the otter. A sigil of waterborn from the river otter. I never did ask you your name. Remember, there is now but one final matter. The portrait. Are you ready? Achievement unlocked, blood artist. You do not need to smile. <laughs> yeah. Sort of adjust the difficulty down if you're not as... Yep. Because here we are back. I've got both lives. I've got a squirrel in a bottle. And I've got a pliers. Here we go again. Another challenger. Perhaps it is time. Perhaps you can understand bones. The resourceful possum costs two bones. You gain a bone when one of your creatures perishes. For any reason. Ooh. Okay, so this stone is the same one that has, like, a... Interesting. So I could go straight for a wolf. The Rattler's gonna come out. Hmm. But if I squirrel into Stoat, that'll give me a bone. Yeah, different resources. They're including more of the gameplay. So it's definitely, like... I probably was intended to survive a little longer than that on my first run. But this is fine. Um... Yeah, the stoat will not survive the rattlers, so let me get the squirrel out and then sacrifice for the stoat. From the death of your creature, you gained a bone. You will not lose this until it is spent or the battle ends. Yeah, looks like I did a dead. Um, I was trying to set up for like a more long-term strategy, and um, he just clocked too much damage on me. So I got a death card. I made it a zero cost, three, two with submerge so that's gonna be pretty damn strong i'm curious if it's gonna show my steam profile picture <laughs> as like the portrait for that that could be kind of fun if that's how it works now i play the squirrel here so the rattler kills it and then i can get out the possum who can then kill the rattler next turn and i can save my squirrel in a bottle um, right, because I have two bones, so I can play the possum. You start making your own totems, it gets easy. Yeah, I believe that. Awesome, right here, for the bones. Um, I'll hold the squirrel for now, because it has no real use to me. The stoat will block the attack, and our little spirit guide buddy is not awake yet. So we don't really need his advice. Bullfrog? Mm. Bit disappointing, but... It's something. Get him! Oh, and he's just out of cards now. Kill! Oh, maybe I should have drawn that out more to get the teeth. Oh. I forgot your figurine. Get up and fetch it for me. It's beside the safe. I did notice those earlier. I guess I'm this guy. I'm a dapper gentleman. Has anything else around the house changed? I can still do that. The lit candle is different. Still can't get the knife. Oh, what? What is this? Is this like a preview of the next match? I did not notice this before if it was here. Clock puzzle's still there. Whatever those are, still sealed. Oh, I can see... Frozen... Hmm. Well, I can get a sense for those as they play. 
Let us continue. What do we got? The meager coyote, but what do you expect for only four bones? The nefarious rattler. A brittle creature once passed its monstrous fangs. The unkillable cockroach, it returns to your hand after dying. That's good, but a cost of four bones is a little high for my taste. Um, out of these options, I think the coyote is the best one because four bones shouldn't be that hard to build up to. Six bones for a three one feels like it's just too costly for the level of power I get. You know, you're free to get up again. To keep your blood flowing. Nah, it's fine. I took a look around. I'm good to continue the game, friend. Who apparently kills me when I fail at his game. Bottle Squirrel is always great to have. Are you smart or something? He doesn't even usually bother teaching about bones. Alright, here's a tip. I saw a past victim writing a passcode in the rulebook. Uh-huh. Okay, he's got a porcupine and a coyote coming out. Bullfrog has two. I'll play the stout in front of the coyote. It'll survive its attack and kill it on the counter. Um, could also burn my squirrels to try and get something out to block the porcupine. But that's only one damage, so I'd rather save that for now. Keep me alive. I'll do my best. But I guarantee nothing. I might need you for your bones. Because... Ah, God damn it! Because you know what they say, the bones are their money. <laughs> um, if I put the bullfrog in front of the porcupine, it will only end up dying. So it's not worth rushing out. Let me draw a squirrel. I'll tank a damage this turn. But then next turn I could draw another squirrel and tech up straight to a wolf. And gather some bones in the meantime for further power plays. Yep, the reflective damage leaves my wolf alive, and I can just keep piling on the hurt. Awesome. I haven't drawn my death card yet. In fact, I just exhausted my deck. Do I need to, like, unlock it? That could be a thing. Hmm. In any case, field's wide open. Just kick his ass. If you desire it, you may stand now. It will allow me time to plan. I am no tyrant. You may stand up whenever the map is unrolled. It allows me time to plan your next encounter. But do keep your hands off my possessions. Okay. But I do want to, you know, check the rule book just for 273. Okay. Don't mind me. Just keep playing in there, buddy. Two, seven, three. Stink bug? Oh, hello. I wasn't sure if I could ever escape that iron crypt. Is, but is the stout around? The stunted wolf? This madness must end. Put that away. How about no? I'm gonna keep looting your shit. What? I don't know what this does, so I feel like I shouldn't touch it. But with only two minutes left, will we have the time for another game? Bear in mind, if anyone does do an encore, that will be four encores on this game. Like, I'm not going to object at all, but it will leave chat out of vetoes for the stream. I can touch it? Okay. I just don't understand what it's doing.
Yeah, I need I need a clue about that. Imagine it's like the card game. Oh. I forgot that I had put that there. Very well, you may add it to your deck and I'll deal you one every so often. The Skink. Don't know what that ability is. Okay then, so... Can't move that up. Can't move that down. Wait, how does that not do it? Eh? How is that only two damage? This deals one, this deals three. Yeah, that should be five damage, because there's no blockers over here. This is the cards that are coming out. Oh, okay. Um, very well. Chat veto purchase. We are at time, so... Yes, that is the right one, but it's exclamation mark encore. But now, there's been a veto, or been an encore, and you, you guys collectively still have a veto left. So yes, that's the correct one to give another... <laughs> yep, it is down there in the bottom of the screen, but I don't know if you're on mobile or not. I think that might be a little hard to read. The rules for like extending time but all right we'll go for another 15. i'm definitely gonna need to take a break after this though so i don't am i just stupid i don't understand what i'm doing wrong in this case because this is like cards in hand right yeah oh that does help that's still not enough, though. And this one, I, can, I can't, I can like, really change it appreciably at all. Because, yeah, this is more powerful, but that is a, blo a flying blocker. So I maximize damage here. These should be unblocked, but for some reason... For some reason, I can't... Yeah, I don't understand that one. I don't understand that one. Maybe I'll come back to it. Maybe... Oh, wait. I can look up what the lizard does. Where is the lizard? Loose tail. When a card bearing the sigil would be struck, a tail is created in its place, and a card bearing the sigil moves to the right? Yeah, no, I still don't understand why the puzzle doesn't work. Whatever. Let's keep moving. Suit brain, understandable. Hmm. There I am. Obviously, I'm taking my horrifically overpowered card. Now, will I be able to power myself up? Warm a creature by the fire, enhance its power, said a hungry survivor. <laughs> Stop this. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, um, ow! Yeah, I'm just gonna, um, yeah. The fire warmed the weary Bimbert and enhanced their power. You suspected the intentions of the survivors were less than pure. With your Vimbert in tow, you retreated into the woods. So, the stink bug and the stoat are obviously you again. Indeed, our friend freed me. Well, I basically told them how to do it. You got a plan? We have another friend here. You've got to be... I wouldn't call him a friend, but I suppose we are in deep this time. So, what is the stench again? Right, it's the diva. So, if I put him across the river otter, the river otter just becomes useless for all time. 
because it becomes a zero one that can't block. So that's perfect. Let me. Oh, the stink bug requires bones though. Hmm. Tricky. Okay, that's fine. I can build up to it. I'll squirrel into stoat. You sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. To be like, oh, they, your creature. Right? I like, I keep expecting that to happen, but they keep juking me out on it, at least for now. Um. <laughs> Victory is mine. So the stoat will die next turn. And then I can put out the stink bug across from the aquatic creature. And... Yes. <laughs> so deliciously overpowered. <laughs> Ow! Um... So I'm not going to want to play the wolf, so I should probably draw a squirrel. And I might just honestly, like, stall out the porcupine. Stink bug there. Back in the game. Or I could just accept the damage. But actually, I think this is going to be a kill shot right here, so this is all kind of academic. Yep, give me them teeth. Give me them teeths. Elk, the conniving raven, a blight upon the skies. The regal moose, the creatures of the wild make way for it. Oh my god. Hefty, the enemy card bearing the sigil will move in the direction inscribed in the sigil. Creatures in the way will be pushed in the same direction. Okay. Like, that's good, but three sacrifices is kind of a heavy cost to pay. I'm not... crazy about any of these options. But Moosebuck might be the best of the bunch, or maybe Raven. Yeah, let me take Raven. I'm really leery of a three sacrifice cost. That feels very difficult to do. Um, I'm full up on items. I could go for a sacrifice play. But I feel like I don't have a ton in the way of great sigils, so let me go for campfire again. The crackling fire lit the starving faces of a group of survivors. We have not food, one said. But perhaps one of your creatures will join us, enhance its power, said another. <laughs> nope. Do what you must. Okay, escape. Restart your tail. Okay. <laughs> you could keep buffing myself. <laughs> oh, it's really tempting to just make myself an Uber card. Um. But on the off chant, like, they're getting more and more obvious about, like, we're so hungry. But hey, just, like, join us by the fire. It'll be fine. I don't want to lose my death card. Um. I also don't want to risk losing the story friends. Um. Just on the off chance that's, like, a thing. So let me buff the Raven. Give it a little more damage. The power of the Raven was enhanced by the warmth. As one of the survivors began pulling a knife from their pocket, you withdrew. Eventually, they're going to kill my card that I put there. Like, that's absolutely gonna be a thing, right? Oh, not this shit again. So strange. Why can't I remember his name? I believe I lost some of my memory in the flash. The flash behind that door. Okay, so the coyotes just have the move down thing. That's whatever. That's fine. That's nothing. Um, coyote has two attack. Bullfrog only has one. 
Stink bug would be good, but I don't won't have the bones for it. Unless I could build up to it if I squirrel into bullfrog, have the coyote kill the bullfrog, and then I'll have two bones, which will let me play the stink bug, and then the coyote will only have one attack on its turn, and then the stink bug can kill it. But in the meantime, I'm just getting smacked in the face by the river otter, which I'm not crazy about. So I'd rather take the two damage unopposed for now and work towards a better way long term to deal with killing it. Like, maybe I draw my Vimbert card. Okay, Porcupine's gonna be very annoying. Um, I'll bust out my squirrels if I must. And I feel like I might need to, otherwise this is going to be too much damage. Because let's see, how much... Yeah, I'll take three damage. Yeah. I need the squirrels. Give them to me. Oops, nope. Squirrel. Then... Sacrifice, sacrifice, give me the bones, play the raven here. Or I could just coyote. Because I have... No, I have three bones. I need stink bug here. There we go. Starting to turn the tide a little bit. Bullfrog's going to die next turn. I need to keep that in mind. Which will give me a bone, but not right away. Sparrow is going to be annoying, but I'm still winning the damage race. Hey! Alright. Kill him! Yeah, the custom cards absolutely let you snap the game in twain, and I love it. I... Or wait, what was the voice for the dragon? I the most, I, I the most exquisite pants. The first one's free. Um, would like the golden pelt, please, and then nothing else. I never did quite. Oh, okay. I just click on it. Much appreciated. Fire, items... Uh, I burned up two of my squirrels. I might want to get items just in case. Oh, also, the chat tracker hasn't died yet, so I should probably give it a kick because it's bound to in a few minutes if I don't. Um, bottle squirrel is always good. A powerful item. Turn this and I'll skip my next turn. Yeah, sounds good, dude. What? My boss battles are high stakes tests of your aptitude. With one flame, you will either overcome them or die. Fear not. I will let you keep the smoke. <laughs> what? The incessant clank, clank, clanking reverberated between your ears. The path ahead was blocked by a grotesque figure. Was the prospector. He <laughs> okay, so now I know what he's about. What does the smoke do? Oh, when it dies, you get four bones. That's neat. So I just need to kill the pack mule, is the important part. Which I can do fairly easily with the Vimbert card. So. Then I can squirrel into skink. I don't know what the tail does. That'll let me rack up bones, though. But let me sack the smoke. 
so many bones. I want to see how this tail mechanic works. Just immediately clock damage on it. There's gold in them cards! Maybe shouldn't have wasted my death card on phase one. G gold I'm struck gold! But it's fine. We can get the possum out for some free damage right away. I remembered, but I figured it was best to just, like, push through it and, like, get to phase two, so to speak. Because I still got options here. So the Bloodhound is... of concern. I think I'll put the Rabbit Pelt out just to block its attack. And see if I can top deck a better card this turn. <laughs> Prospector Boss again? Yeah, he can take a hit from the guy. Which isn't great, but it's better than just sending a squirrel to die. Bad play. You know, I'm starting to get a little tired of the stout sentence. He's the one who got turned into a worthless card. Aw, oh, stink bug. My buddy, my man. Shall we? Okay, and we are at time. I'm going to at least finish this boss fight um, before I move on to next game in my break. But chat, you do technically have a veto left. We could go for yet another 15 minutes. <laughs> it's gonna lead to a whole lot of not randomness in the shuffle, but the power is yours. Right, um, I need something to kill the Bloodhound. Which I can get guaranteed from a squirrel, so I'll just take a squirrel. I'll be boring. Bird in hand and all that. It is interesting to have like a TCG-esque system where you can guarantee a draw every turn, like the same card. Let me relight your candles. Very well. You may choose a rare card. What the hell? This level of brutish strength needs no explanation. I think it kind of does. The Gek. Oh, I gotta go with my boy, the Mothman. Mothman! There's no need to feel down. After the harrowing encounter with the Prospector, you gathered yourself and continued onwards. Let me see. The air grew thick with moisture. The buzzing and chirping of insects drowned out the sound of your footballs. You beheld the wetlands. But, this is Shuffle Saturday, where we put... Wait, Alter Deck? Oh, I don't have that option. Where we play a different game every 30 minutes, or a little less frequently than that, if people choose Encores. Um, I'm glad everyone uh, vibed so much with um, with that game. I was enjoying it quite a bit as well, and I may have to come back to it uh, on some later stream. But for now, let me get this screen pulled back up. I need to take a little break, but when I come back, we will roll another game to play. I need to mark off Vito's here, thanks to the selfless... Uh, expenditure of garlic coin from Fox. Y'all have one veto remaining. I've still got both of mine. Um, I'm gonna toss up a prediction and run an ad. I need to re-up my water, use a restroom, because we were on that game for, you know, a, a little bit, a moderate length of time. <laughs> I'll be back in just a little bit. I hope you'll stick with me and we'll see what we're playing next.
Oh, man. I'm getting old, chat. <laughs> I felt my knee pop when I got up. I was like... <laughs> okay, that Vixion has closed. Uh, looks like only one person decided to get in on it, so I'll just do a refund. Uh, next up for us for Shuffle Saturday will be... <laughs> nope, can't play that one. Can't play that one, thanks, TOS. Um, instead of that game... <laughs> Who wants to be a millionaire? Second edition for the Game Boy Color. You know what? I'm curious. That was a Steam game, yes. So, I will get, uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Second Edition, loaded up. In just a bit, if you'd rather we have something else. Ah! It's not exactly an H game, but it's close enough that I don't want to take chances. Um, game is called Trap Shrine, if you're curious. Unfortunate title, but, um... <coughs> <laughs> yeah no 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 no. the song is from an H game called Sakura Dungeon which I unironically recommend but ticket, I mean if you like the ladies if you don't like the ladies not much not much point to it okay we will have sound back in a minute um who wants to be a million Millionaire Second Hang on, there's like a first and a second edition. Second edition! Here we go! <laughs> okay. We'll flip over to this screen. Um, I think that's about as good as I can get for screen size. We'll have the sound back in a second. I did. Um, HD, a regular around here, has was able to guess it, so I figured there's not much point in reveal it, in concealing it any further. Who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire? 30 minutes on the clock. This... This game show was like... Um, was like incredible. It was everywhere back in the day. I got super hyped for it too. Big part of it was, like, the presentation. Uh, HD is, um, she, but yes. My name is, of course... Vimber. It's okay, you had no way of realistically knowing, Nate. Guy from my home town. Wow! Oh, that's so cool! It really was the thing that people watched. It was, like, almost as big as, like, Survivor, I feel like. What are the names of Donald Duck's three nephews? Um, that is Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Is that your final answer? Hundred dollars. The two hundred dollar question. In America, what is the main ingredient in pepperoni? Meat? Yeah, this doesn't seem half bad. It's a little basic in presentation, but it's Game Boy Color. You know, you can't reasonably expect much more. In the children's game, what color is Rover? It is Red Rover, Red Rover, send Vimbert right over. It even has the, you know, the time limits, which are not bad. The term describes a tribe that is no set homeland and wanders from place to place. That is nomadic. Yes, that's my final answer, Regis. I can show off my true wisdom to you all, because sometimes I can definitely seem like a dumbass on stream. In a Jimmy Buffett's... What is the searcher's scene? Margaritaville? Uh, I don't know music. Um, makes sense for it to be Lime or Shaker of Salt. Okay. Thank you for being a free phone a friend. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> oh man, the zoom out and fly around. Amazing. Incredible. I love this. When driving, which of the following gestures means left turn? It is... Oh, I believe it's arm bent upwards, because that's meant to look like an L. The arm straight out is a right. Oh, or not. Shit! <laughs> Well, we go again. Who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> Obviously, it's been a minute since I rode my bike. And, you know, all the motorcycles I've ridden on since have, uh, you know, had turn signals. Yeah, exactly. Just a warm-up. Well, let me follow Pokeboomer's convention. Um, my name is... Tubert. The thing, I was considering vetoing this. This is perfectly fine. The majority of calcium in the human body is found where? Bones. Ah. Uh. Even if you have a condition like mine, that's still true. What's unique about a skeleton key? It opens many locks. Final answer, Regis. <laughs> Pretty much. That's what I did with inscription as well. When daylight saving time arrives, how do you, arrives in the spring. That is, um, spring forward. How do most Americans? I do like how's the, how there's the time limit still. What term is used to describe? That is a school. Final answer. If I hadn't done the mysterious evil guy voice for inscription, I might be doing that here there, but I'm still kind of... Uh, alcoholic drink laced with a knockout drug. A Mickey Finn? Cause slipped them a Mickey? Alright, so we got that correct. And we have earned our way up to $1,000. I am Tubert, who is completely unrelated to the Vimbert who was here earlier. It is good to be here, Regis, and I'm looking forward to winning all kinds of money. For removing ink stains, that sounds like... Mm, baking soda? Perhaps. Let me think on it for a minute and definitely not look over at the chat and select hairspray. It came all from my own brain. I am just that good, Regis. You have never had a contestant on the show quite like me before. What the name of the uh, object in motion tends to stay in motion. That is the law of inertia. Because that's what inertia is. Right. I was like, this is too straightforward. This has to be a trick question, right? But no. I thought the music was broken for a second. Um, items require at least two needles. Um. Ooh. Crocheting, I believe, requires two needles. Is it hand knitting? I must be getting those confused. Okay. Eight thousand dollars. I am curious how the phone a friend is going to work. And like, obviously it is inferior to you all playing along. What is called a lorry in Britain. That is a truck. I know this thanks to Disco Elysium. An excellent get that you should always become an ultra-liberal in. For big capitalism and the most money. Who is Charlie McCarthy? Not a US Senator, because that was... Is it? Let me lifeline. Uh, 50-50. Uh, Give me the 50-50. Okay, well... It has to be a US Senator, right? Because it was the whole thing with McCarthyism, but didn't he have a different first name? Damn it, this is going to be wrong. Yeah. 
I still got $1,000. I mean, I got $1,000 for the first time. Because I'm Tuber, not Vimber. Thank you, Fox, for that voice redeem. And we go again. I like how quick it is to, like, jump right back into it. In fact, in the spirit of that speed, my name is... Ah! Okay, back in. What kind of worker uses a paddy wagon? Is that a cop? It's the first question, so who cares if I'm wrong? The rice farmer threw me for a loop, because I know there's a rice paddy. Glad it was right, though. Does a gastroenterologist examine? That will be a stunt, because they're all about the digestive system. Force Gus is an ice cream to cone to fly off of a spinning merry-go-round. That is a centrifugal force. Cen centri it's A. Even if I can't say the word correctly, I know what it means. <laughs> it's been a bit of a running problem throughout my life. Color is Uncle Sam's goatee. That is white. What else you got for that $1,000 question? With what would you use a wah-wah pedal? That is an electric guitar. My older brother used this all the time. So did my little brother, actually. I'm the only one of us three brothers who doesn't know how to play guitar. I was more of a drummer myself, though. What was the birth name of Malcolm, of civil rights leader Malcolm X? Oh, wasn't it? Oh shit, um... I do not know. Um, give me the 50-50. Uh, Michael Brown. That felt too obvious. Yeah, they're tricky, but I remember a lot of contestants on the show, like, having to get knocked back down to $1,000, so... Honestly, it's on brand. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. And it makes it a little more fair, because you guys are all here with me. So, it's evening things out a little bit. Now, this would be a heck of a game to try and speedrun. Perfect RNG for all answers to be A. How do you express three fourths as, as a decimal? 0.75. The thing that's going to screw me is pop culture questions. Um, that is American in ABC. It is, they are the American Broadcasting Corporation. I believe. Didn't who want Millionaire Air on ABC? The Beatles came out of Liverpool, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Here was just talking about pop culture screwing me. No, I mean, Beatles are not exactly eh. Uh, that would be an atheist, though it's interesting that they have Deist on there. I'm just gonna talk at you for a little bit. Um... Because deism is a very interesting, like, sort of religious thing that I used to subscribe to back in the day. Basically, they believe in the existence of God, but they don't believe God does anything to the world. They're like, God just made the world, and then they leave, and then he left it be. Very fascinating. It was kind of popular around the time of, um, the American Revolution, and I think it, some French Enlightenment thinkers also subscribed to it. International telephone call from within the U.S. What are the first numbers you should dial? I don't know, dude. Um, from within the U.S.? Uh, hey, let's see what phone a friend is like. I know the person to call. Boy, I should know this. I'll have to go with B. 
I felt like A, it had to be A or B, obviously not D. I'll go with the friend. Traitor! You walk away with nothing, but they still wrote us a check. Again! Never trust Regis. I know, right? It was just him disguising his voice. I should have known. My name is... This is the you? Yes. Yeah, I mean, at least the game did say, like, boy, I should know this. But, like, I don't communicate with people uh, who are outside of the U.S. over the phone. I just do it over, like, Discord. Uh, which animated character is a crush on the little red-haired girl? Charlie Brown? Okay. I do not know my peanuts that well. Beyond just the kick the football. Backgammon is a how many player game that is two. Can at least speed through these initial questions for the most part. Which of these movies does not star Jim Carrey? Truman Show does, Dumb and Dumber, The Mask does. By process of elimination, it is Patch Adams. A movie I don't know anything about. Never seen The Truman Show, but I've seen the other two shows. I actually have great respect for Jim Carrey as an actor. What internet company goes by? <laughs> oh, that's America Online. Robin Williams, okay. He did good work. Should maybe watch it sometime. How many ounces are in a pound? That is 16 ounces. This might be tricky if I wasn't American. Or wait, do the English studios? Or does the UK use that? Uh, for today... Oh, I'm screwed. Um, the Hogan family? What the f is that? Um, this is some stupid pop culture one, so pull the audience. They seem pretty sure, so let's go with B. Nice. Oh yeah, and I guess I should say, I guess I kind of took it for granted. I'm fine with you guys, like, playing along with me and saying things, but please don't, like, Google the answers. That'd be kind of lame of you. Which of these vitamins was the first to be named? What do you mean the first to be named? How the hell? Uh, call up a resident scientist. We are not fast enough to type. It's fair. There is chat delay. Okay, then let's vote a friend. I do know this. The answer is A. I couldn't Google that fast. Fair. And that was like my thought first, A, because it's the first one, but... Like, I wonder if they... Does Millionaire still run? I assume it's been off the air for like a decade. Um, fight the Battle of New Orleans. Um... I'm willing to bet the Mexican War, because it was the Mexican... Wait. War of 1812 wouldn't make sense. Um, we didn't have it during the American Revolution. Mexican War? It was the War of 1812? Damn it. Well, we go again. Five, Bert, we'll have a little more luck. I felt like I was on a roll there, and then they just, like, sucker punched me twice in a row with stuff that I definitely didn't know. I know a little bit of history, but not super well. But just anything but pop culture. Uh, that is Chapter 11, Bankruptcy. 
former finance professional here. Easy question. What does a pH level measure? That is... Acidity? Acidity. Medical term for a doctor's identification of disease. That is a... Diagnosis. Right. Prognosis is more like... You going to survive? Why? It's different from a diagnosis, though. That's the important thing. Government agency established to protect investors. That is the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. Easy questions. Not a traditional Greek dish. Uh, that's, suki that's sukiyaki, because that's Asian. I don't know where, which Asian culture it is, but yeah, so far things are going okay, but this is where they start to screw me. You watch. <laughs> it, oh shit, a peregrine? Is that a bird? I feel like it's a bird. You agree it's a bird? Okay, I feel good about it then. Right, a peregrine falcon. Yes, 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 yes. Of course. My bird knowledge is like patchy. South Af Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. Um, that was the African National Congress. Right? Yeah, none of the yeah, African National Congress. ANC. 100 percent Man, Nelson Mandela. Hm. Long as a single term in the U.S. Senate, that is... Six years? It's not two, because that's the House of Representatives. But senators can be elected on off years, like not presidential elections, so it must be six. Six, yeah, you agree. Nice, okay. Update K. We climb and almost at that 32K mark. Which pro wrestler grapples with Sylvester Stallone? I'm pretty sure it's Dolph Lundgren in Rocky 3. I don't know who the Iron Sheik is, but I'm pretty sure it's not Hulk Hogan or Andre the Giant. Pretty sure it's Dolph Lundgren. Pretty sure. What? Damn. In my hubris! Ah. Who wants to be a we all said it wasn't Hogan. Well. Pop culture kills me every time. Uh, this is Sixpert? Expert. Eventually, I will win that million dollars. Then I'll be able to retire from my actual job and become a full-time streamer. Um, sculpting, baking, singing, weaving. <laughs> How many disguises do you have? Don't worry about it. I have as many disguises as I have voices. Uh, ISP is an internet service provider. Though I'm just doing with one voice for the heck of it, because Regis don't seem to care. He's just letting me walk back in. Baby who appears in uh, with Popeye the Sailor? What? Crap, I know olive oil, but the baby who appears with Popeye? Pull the audience. Oh, everyone's a Popeye expert. Uh-huh, okay. I'm such an idiot for not knowing his sweepy. Sure, whatever game. 
<laughs> I like how they were like zero, zero, a hundred percent. Uh, cheese is needed in veal parmigiano because it's got parmigiano in its name. I do know my foods decently well. Uh, oh, that's, um, that's Ray Romano, obviously. God, everybody loves Raymond. Ugh. <laughs> I have no strong feelings about it, just like... This has always seemed like an average sitcom to me. In a spinning class? Is that... a bicycle? Because the wheels spin? None of the rest makes sense. Okay, it would make more sense to me if it was like a hula hoop or something, but... We'll win the million together. Till the next time I inevitably take an educated guess and get screwed. <laughs> first, first lady to run for political office. That would be... This is a trap. Hillary hadn't... Well, wait, political office. She was a senator. Right, she was a senator before she was a presidential candidate, right? It's gotta be Hillary. Cause she was she was a senator, right? Before Bill got Yeah, this was long before she ran for pres, but it's not the first first lady to run for Yeah, okay, it was Hillary. Right. Cause she was a senator back in the day. Okay, I wasn't crazy. None of the rest made sense to me. Jerry Adams is what? Uh, phone a friend. We've got no hope of answering this. Fine, let's phone a friend. Uh, it sounds like it's C. Yeah, my answer is C. I don't even know what organization this is. Uh, PLO is the, um... I, I think it's what, what has become the Palestinian Authority. It was like Palestinian Liberation something. Nickname of Ford was controversial. Old Sparky! That's an easy one. Come on, Regis. Give me, actually, no, please take it easy on me. I would like to beat the game and not just, like, completely fail the entire time for the segment. Who are the Know Nothings? They were a political party back in America's past, who did a bunch of shady, borderline illegal stuff, and they got their nickname for being a know-nothings because when they were questioned on their illegal activities, they would respond with, I know nothing. Uh, but which Native American tribe did Chief Crazy Horse lead? I think the Sioux, because there's a Crazy Horse statue in South Dakota, and the Sioux had a presence in South Dakota. Iroquois sounds wrong because they were more in the Pacific. They were more in the Northeast. Uh, I'm gonna go with Sue. Yes. All right. Whew, Dakota upbringing coming in handy for something. <laughs> uh, what are Misties? That's easy. Final answer. Come on. Who doesn't know about the Misties? Mystery Science Theater 3000. Hell yeah. I knew a pop culture thing. Uh, original name of the Apple Macintosh XL computer? I think it's Granny Smith. I'm pretty sure they wanted to call it Granny Smith. Because Apple. Granny Smith, final answer. Fuck. Yeah. Still the best run I've had so far. Got to the 32k. But with only three minutes left, do I have a single hope of making a full run? I can damn well try. We 
We gotta go fast. My name is Ah. Yeah, I'd absolutely take thirty-two thousand, particularly if it were adjusted for inflation <laughs> these days. Uh, not used as a spice, hemlock, because it's poison. Typically not used as a spice, Jesus. Seven Eleven. Um, that's the big goal. Big drink. Yes, I would like a big drink. Had an ex who was obsessed with those things and slurpees. Um, Simon and Garfunkel. They're a music duo, not a cartoon duo. Final answer. As opposed to Ch -ch Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers, Ch -ch Chip and Dale. Uh, cataracts that would need an operation on their eye. I have a family history of those. Er, no. Astigmatism, not cataracts. Uh. Oh, fuck. I don't know. Anyone here a friend, Stan? I assume one of the ladies because stereotypes. Oh, hey, and it was. <laughs> Final answer. Either way, I appreciate you coming in clutch like that. Um, oh. I know one of them was Meriwether, so it must be B. Yep. Because that always stuck out to me when I learned about that history. It was like, their first name was Meriwether? <laughs> That's funny. That's a funny name. Country was once ruled by shoguns. That is Japan. You think a weeb like me wouldn't know that? Please! <laughs> We're like about to come up on time here, but I'm just gonna finish this run and then we'll move on to next game. Which one of these is not one of Aesop's fables? Heron the Tortoise is. Ox and the Frog sounds like it. I don't know between A and C. So I am. Tempted to... I'm gonna 50-50 and see what it leaves me with. Okay, I'm pretty sure Ox and the Frogs is not. So let me choose, go with Dog and the Squirrel. Nice. Good guess. Not one of the official languages of the United Nations? Well, Russia is on the Security Council. There's a lot of countries that speak Spanish. Almost certainly Japanese, right? Yeah. And English, like, of course. Alright, we're at the 32k mark. And we are past time, but I'm finishing out the... Ow. <laughs> I have no goddamn idea. <laughs> Pull the audience. 56 ain't bad. Was that the year of, like, the miracle on the ice or whatever? Sure. I'll go with B. Nice. Big ups to the game audience. I only know the name, like, Miracle on the Ice. I don't even really know what happened. I think it's, like, the U.S. team winning, but... Walker Cup? Uh... Sports ball fans in the chat? I truly have no idea. I feel like probably not tennis, maybe not golf. But, man, I don't know anything about cricket or squash. Okay, then, let's vote a friend. Come on, that's easy. It's D. You didn't know that? Really? Okay. Huh. Well, yeah, I felt for sure it wasn't golf for whatever reason, so... Damn, good thing I burned that. No lifelines. 
Oh. <laughs> well, I'm screwed. I don't know this the poem Jabberwocky at all. I know it's got a lot of nonsense words. Bandersnatch! I'm pretty sure it's in there. Um, just because of Final Fantasy associations. Bro, okay. Because they just walk. Heh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it makes so much sense. Alright. For a quarter of a million dollars. Um. Not alive in the 20th century. I'm pretty sure it was Mark Twain. Because Ulysses S. Grant was in the Civil War. Sigmund Freud was considered a contemporary by World War II folk. Mark Twain? Oh, no! Ulysses S. Grant! He was a Civil War... You idiot! Who was I thinking of? Damn it. Well. Not me, apparently. But this is Shuffle Saturday, where we play a different game every 30 minutes. If you came in during that, we're moving on from Millionaire. It was a pretty decent run. Got It was the furthest we'd gotten, so I feel satisfied with the progress. This, depending on how I'm feeling at the end of the game, might be the last game, just to give a heads up. Um, I'll see how I'm feeling after this. It was fun. I wasn't expecting much, but I got into that. It's It's been a night of good games, so we're probably in for some curse content. On that note, next up for Shuffle Saturday is... Oh, no, 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 a thousand times no, I'm vetoing that. <laughs> Instead of Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Duel Stories, we will play... Hitman Blood Money? I know nothing about this game. Um, okay, that's not like a giant download for a rep. Okay, veto, very well. Let's try for something a little more. Oops, I marked off one of my... Sorry, I hit the wrong veto there on my overlay. Oh, God. Oh, God, I'm breaking everything. Uh... Okay, there we go. All right, instead of Hitman Blood Money, we will play... That doesn't sound good. Let's get full chaos in here. I'll burn my last veto. Instead of Painter for the Game Boy Color, we will play... Mega Man Battle Chip Challenge? Is this like a spinoff from Mega Man Battle Network? I truly have no idea. What a, oh! Nate has purchased a veto and used that veto very well. Instead of a Mega Man Battle Chip Challenge, we will play. <laughs> Stim City 2000. Okay. Going real hard tonight. Now I just need to try and remember where I own that from. I have to assume GOG, right? Man, good old Sim City. <laughs> Alright, it'll take me some minutes to grab that and then. Sim City, Sim City. Yeah. Sim City. Wait. What? My GOG account claims I don't have any games. Oh, okay. That... <laughs> Jesus, gave me a fucking heart attack there. Okay. Um, let's download that. No need to GOG Galaxy it. SimCity 2000 is like the one version of the game I know pretty well. A lot of people um, have a lot of experience with this because of like uh, the Super Nintendo SimCity, but SimCity 2000, well, it was like my comfort zone. 
This is an older game. Uh, the screen still says Mega Man? Really? Hello? Can you hear me? Is it okay now? Okay, it looks like I'm a creepy... Okay, that's weird. I've never... Maybe I clicked out of the screen too fast. Huh. Okay. Whatever. So, it might take me a few tries to get this in, like, an acceptable state or to capture, because this is an older PC game. I just want to give all the... I will make every attempt I can to get this working, but there is a chance I will not be able to get this to show up correctly. Um, that said, I will try my damnedest. I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. If I'm lucky, this will just uh, work the first try. We have sound. Can we get video? Okay, I don't know if tapping out of this is gonna break it. Oh god, this is just gonna be like Harvester all over again. window capture instead. No, that doesn't even show up as an option. Okay, stand by. Stand by. Uh... Hmm. Should have using, like, desktop capture, which I never, ever, ever want to do. Maybe if I tab back into it with this selected? Aw, oh, come on. I want to play SimCity 2000 on stream here. Because that is the name of the... SimCity, why must you do this? Sorry, everyone. It looks like SimCity 2000 doesn't want to play ball. <laughs> so frustrating. It's up and running on my other monitor, and I... Damn. Okay, I'll have to add that to the list of games that don't capture. Sorry, I was kind of looking forward to that, too. Let me add it to the list of games that I have to throw out of the randomizer. These do still pop up from time to time, like I said at the top of the stream. So... But not to worry, we got plenty more where that came from. SimCity 2002 apps. Instead of SimCity, we will play Dual Blades for the Game Boy Advance. Oh. Wait, is this the janky fighting? <gasps> this is the game with Brandon! This is the game with Brandon! We played this a couple weeks ago. Oh boy, we get to have Brandon again. Happy day! Oh, y'all are in for a treat if you didn't see this last time it came up on Shuffle. This game is a gem. It's awful in all the correct ways. Oh man, this is the only fighting game I enjoy. Dual Blades, man. We got a couple blasts from the past. We had, um... We had, uh... Barbie and... I just played this two weeks ago. It should still be... Yeah, you went real deep on it last time. You even found, like, the mobile game. What the fuck is that called? Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay. Let's flip over to this screen, and I know this capture will work. Ooh, that's a little stretched. Let's touch that up a little bit. Just a little. Um, I'll put it over here. 
and 30 minutes on the clock. Let's play some Dual Blades. Arcade. Now, we beat the game with my boy Brandon last time, but just in case there's anyone in chat who didn't see Brand the glory that is Brandon originally, I'm going to do one match with Brandon just to show off his win sprite. Brandon versus Jamon. Oh, strong start for our boy Brandon. The ever victorious Brandon. Except when I lose, which is which does happen from time to time. Actually, free for an hour and then you buy the full game. Clubby feels better on consoles. That makes sense. Hmm. Interesting that they let you have it free for an hour and then buy it. I think I'd honestly prefer that over the your average uh, mobile monetization scheme. Like, it's more like going back to, like, the shareware and freeware days. Maybe I'm an old man, but I'm, like... I'm nostalgic for that model, where, like... You would get a certain chunk of the game for free. Like, the beginning chunk, and then it'd be like, Okay, if you like this, please buy the full game. Um, I was always very fond of it. Like, you know, we have demos these days, but it's just not the same. Because sometimes those are, like, more, a little more curated, a little more of a vertical slice sometimes. And sometimes, you know, the demos are not accurate to what the full game can be. Shareware, you were like, it was the game. Just you got gated out after a certain bit. The closest thing I could think of is like um, how some MMOs, subscription MMOs, like, oh, hang on, I'll continue this in a minute because we, you have to behold, take, turn your full attention to the screen. You need to behold. Brandon. <laughs> Never gets old. <laughs> There's our boy. <laughs> oh, it only runs during fights. That is nice. Uh, but anyway, the closest thing to share where we have these days is like uh, subscription MMOs like World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV do this. Where they're like, oh, it's free up to a certain level. And you can't do some things like... Um, uh, like trade with others, for example, or talk in party chat. But you can experience the game, and then just if you want to remove those, you pay for the subscription. Stuff a little more like that is what I like. Um, so I want to try with another character. Um, let me try... Let me go with stereotypical hot lady. Oh, right, I forgot. I need to select my Slash Dance and Sudden Death. Sounds good. Kane versus Effie. Two names that Vimbert is definitely not mispronouncing horrifically. This is horrifically unfitting music. Her B is, like, weirdly, like, walky. Her movement does not feel good. Oh, but I can combo with her blade? Let's go. I can just poke people to death by just smashing the A button. It's cheap, cowardly, and borderline cheating, but I like it. <laughs> her, re her reach isn't half bad with that, too. <laughs> Kane. Pinch poke, you owe me a coke. And by coke, I mean your death. To avenge the death of my master, or whatever my backstory is. I can use B when they're a little more at range. Oh, right. 
We figured out how to dodge last time. Nate, or anybody else who was here last time, do you remember how I figured out how to dodge? Er, not dodge, block. I think it was like double tapping into the, yeah, I think it was like dashing into the attack. No, that doesn't seem right either. Duh. All right, can I, can I? All right, lady, let's see your victory sprite. That is okay, Nate. Oh, that's even worse. You are a good fighter, but lack accuracy. What is this art style? Why is this art style? <laughs> Amazing. Perfection. <laughs> this is the most cursed art style in any fighting game that's ever existed. This is Dual Blades. <laughs> in fact, I'll, I'll just take like an informal poll of the chat here. Would you guys rather I try to beat arcade mode on Kanai? Or should I go into versus mode and just try to win once with every character so we can see how horrific their body proportions are in their win art? Because I'm honestly fine with doing either. <laughs> the game really does bring me more joy. It just keeps getting better. It just keeps getting better. I'll keep fighting in the meantime, but... Please sound off. Shin's a bit of a fucker, as I recall. It's time for them to meet the Pope. Ooh, that's a good move. Ow! How dare you! Ooh! Bitch slap kicked me. Oh, that up slash is very bad. Oh, it does hit twice, though. So, like, if they fall for it, it's big damage. Ow. Okay, okay, okay. That's true. We beat with... Okay, I like it. And therefore, like, it might be, like, this might honestly start becoming my go-to if, like, somebody redeems a Vimbert picks the next game. <laughs> Just because it's such a treasure. And, like, the game I was picking for Vimbert picks next game, Lunistus, I have since beaten. Um, there are other characters you can play the game as, but I don't really need to go back to it. Ooh, okay, I'm getting a little more of a sense for this girl. Her grab is nice. Like, it's got giant range. Like, excessive range. Duh. Shin was birds the whole time. Your insult could cost you your life. Look at my giant blocky... I can't even, I don't, I, I, like, I've heard of an hourglass figure before, but come on, man. <laughs> Jesus. It just, it gets worse the longer you look at it. <laughs> okay, this wizard guy was a problem. Yeah, it's true, it doesn't even look like boobs. Like, I think the artist was trying to go for, like, fan service, but they just completely failed. Yeah, Rune Guard. This guy was very strong when I fought him on Brandon, but maybe my infinite poke strategy can make some better headway than Brandon could. Yeah, like, I have big nostalgia for the Game Boy Advance, and, like, it had so many weird little games on it. Because I feel like it must have been really cheap to develop for, because you got all these just bizarre little games on it. It's a really fun system to collect for that reason. Because um, you just find sometimes you get the oddest stuff on here. And 
And I mean, between its library and just all the backwards compatibility it had, really, Game Boy Advance was where Nintendo peaked for me. Um, like, I don't hate Nintendo now. I have a Switch, but... It's basically just um, an Advance Wars reboot camp and Ring Fit machi machine at this point. Ha! <laughs> yeah, we can make a tier list. That's probably the closest I'll ever come to doing reaction content. Unless you count uh, the Redeem I have, which only one person has taken advantage of so far to force me to watch my old YouTube content. But I'm sure as time goes on, like, I keep expecting he one of these dates to just redeem that back to back to back so my stream just becomes a reacting to my old YouTube video stream. Because, like, I know, I know he lurks, and he don't spend his points too often. So I live in fear. Also, Ring Guard was a complete joke. Apparently my quick, my quick attacks better, like, kept him interrupted and locked down. Your magic is useless. After my first slash. I still think my top 10 underrated GBA games list is going to, like, top out with, um, Rivia the Promised Land. It's gonna be really hard to... to beat that one. But, you know. Wait, I am blocking, aren't I? Oh, wait, it's a timing thing. I have to press back right when they... No? Okay. It is a dash into them. It is a dash into them. I don't even know what this is supposed to do for me. It's just a time loss if I don't... Like, get this over with as quick as possible. Well done. Who's next? Kane versus Nagatsuki. I guess she's supposed to be like Mongolian. That's what I would assume from like you know sort of the steep background and uh, the oh what is the term for that a yurt. Let me see if I can hit her with a nope. Could not get her with the up slash. She's a, um... Listen to me try to use fighting game terminology I don't actually understand. A zoner, I think? Where she wants you to, like, keep your distance back a little bit. So my up, my in-your-face poke attacks are good. Unless she gets me with that grab. Because, yeah, she can send her, like, ghost, ghost bastards against us. You know, it's a very, it's the technical term. If you're a dual blades expert like me, you know these things. Mm. Man, I almost want to try and push for another game, but I'm getting like... Mm. I'm getting quite hungry. <laughs> yeah, for that alone, I probably need to wrap after this game. Uh, but I do want to make sure to reiterate, just while I'm like carving through this lady here. Uh, tomorrow, um, I will not be streaming, but at 2 p.m. Mountain Time on Hubic Gaming's channel, um, we'll be doing the Pokeboomers promotional tournament. I'll be taking part. That's Pokemon Showdown fights in Gen 5 OU to win prizes, including an art commission, uh, a Steam gift card, or the ability to name our starters finisher. Did she not die? Yeah, she didn't get cut in half. But I perfected her. Why didn't she die if I perfected her? I don't want to hurt you. Please leave now. Interesting. Uh, sudden death, I guess. And then aside from that, next week it's just the standard schedule. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll be rocking some Fuga 2. I'll also be doing a stream on Friday of Fuga 2, just in a desperate bid to, like, hopefully get that completed before Pokemon starts. And then Saturday, of course, will be Shuffle Saturday.
There's a chance I might be doing something streaming related Thursday, but I'm not 100% sure. Because uh, we'll be back on like... This week was kind of rough for streaming for me because uh, we were like actually assisting customers and like doing phone work and stuff like that. Despite not being fully trained yet at work. But we're going back to just like training material death by PowerPoint stuff, so... I'm expecting work to tire me out quite a bit less, so I might get super ambitious with streaming in the coming week. Particularly if it looks like I'm going to need all the streams I can to finish up Booga 2, because I'm having a great time with that game, and it bugs me when I have like a long-running, like, clear a game series running at the same time as Poke Boomers, because I feel like one or the other just ends up neglected, and I don't like doing that. I'm going to lose. Desperation measure. Start mashing buttons. Recovery? Recovery? Do we clutch? Do we clutch? We clutch. Whew. Barely. Alright. Button mashing worked pretty well last time, so let me... You can't predict my moves if even I don't know what I'm going to do, Jaman. <laughs> I'm pulling the literal Yu-Gi-Oh! But what if I use a card even I haven't seen yet? Pegasus can't read my mind and counter that. <laughs> of course, against, like, actual humans who know fighting games, this just gets you defeated in, like, rapid time, as I've experienced again and again among alleged friends who are like, Oh, Vimber, play this fighting game. I'm like, no, I don't really like fighting games. They're like, oh, it'll be fun. And then they, like, infinite full hit combo me from full to dead in 20 seconds. And they wonder why I never want to play fighting games with them. You know who you are. I carry a bit of a chip on my shoulder for fighting games, it's true. Nobody can stand against the will of vengeance. Oh shit, I called her backstory correctly. Vengeance for her father? Did I get it 100%? Or is she just out for revenge? Oh shit, Brandon. Alright, we gotta bring our A-game. Dragon Tail and Sudden Death. It's the boy. He'll get the infinite poke, and we'll see if he likes it. Ooh. Yep, he's got just as good of a heavy slash as I do. A brutal sword battle. A high-speed bout with the two combatants going back and forth. Hehehehe. <laughs> Shit. Curse you, Brandon! I'm sorry, Brandon. But this time, we cannot allow you to succeed. Hmm. You know what another... Uh, other GBA games I wouldn't mind going back to that have come up on Shuffle? The Yu Yu Hakusho games. There was one that was just, like, seemed to be a generic and kind of bad, like... Brawler, I guess you would call it? That was just retelling the anime? But then there was Tournament Tactics, which was full-on, like, a turn-based strategy game with the Yu Yu Hakusho cast, which looked kind of dope. Oh, did I just cancel you out of your super or something? Sorry, Brandon. The age of... Hanai is here. Death. I feel like those could be a strong could be strong contenders for top ten underrated GBA games. Though I have heard people before talk highly about tournament tactics, so I don't know if that one would qualify. Death is unexpected. The mirror move. Dragon tail and sudden death. We shall have an honorable duel, my doppelganger. Ow. 
Ow. Ow. What is this? She's not just standing there and spamming A. I don't understand. She blocked it, too. Oh, my God. She's really giving me the fucking business here. Damn it! Oh! As I recall, I had trouble with Brandon when I was playing as Brandon, too. Probably because the AI has, like, something of a clue about how to play these characters, and I very don't, beyond just, like, find one strategy that kind of works and just spam that and hope that it doesn't backfire. Dang. We may get walled here. Maybe if I just... Oh, God, she can... Gap close really well, too. Damn. Man, how do you do those dash attacks? That's so cool. Okay, good night. I'm wrapping up here soon, anyway. Thank you for coming up. Aren't... You're not... You two aren't streaming today, huh? Well, regardless, appreciate you hanging out. Have a good rest and a good rest of your weekend. Oh, I'm gonna die. Yep, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh, no pick. No more. No more picks scheduled. I see. The AI just let me. The AI did that just to string me up. It was like, ooh, I'll let you live through your stun. I have to use a continue. A great shame. Maybe if I mash A really hard this time... <laughs> Okay, promising. Damn it. No one CC? We Mario Kart? Not quite. What the hell? Oh, one credit clear. Yeah, not so much. I don't think I even managed that on our boy Brandon, if I remember correctly. One credit clear. Huh. Like I said, I don't really know fighting games, so that explains why I'm... Why did I... What's the definition of insanity again? I kept... I tried the same thing like three times and was like, Oh, huh, that didn't work. Oh, huh, that didn't work. Oh, that didn't work. Yeah, of course it didn't, Bimbert, you dingus. You're not changing up your tactics at all. In a bold, bold display of strategy and cunning, I'm going to begin mashing buttons. This is not going well. <laughs> Oof. Well, if we do run out of credits here on her, I can at least show off one more. Jesus. Oh, we got the throw. That might not be a good thing, though, as the AI is way better at me than closing the, than closing the, at closing the gap. No, 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 They're a little less willing to show uh, their hot lady samurai cut in half, I noticed. Sheesh, this is double standard. Um, let me try... I usually use some... I don't know what any of these do. When it comes to fighting games, I am but... Common fool. Fighting games have always been this weird, like, kind of unknowable wasteland of, like, what I feel like visual novels are to most people, where I, 
where my default response is like, why would people want to play that? Because <laughs> I have a few friends who are into, into fighting games, and like, I'll hear them get really excited about some new fighting game or other. Um, Street Fighter VI might be the exception, because from what I'm hearing, there's a little more to it than what I would think of as like a typical fighting game, but like, they'll get really excited about uh, a Blaze Blue or Guilty Gear or something, and then like, uh, two weeks later, they'll be like, oh yeah, nobody's playing the game anymore. Like, that's insane to me, because like, the whole point of fighting games is to have, you know, like a community of people to like, fight against online or whatever. And if, like, you buy a game full price and it dies in, like, the space of a month, then... Are you really getting your money's worth? I don't know. I, I'm sure I would get it if I was a little more into fighting games and subsequently better at them, but it's never seemed like a, like... I don't know, the, the pure value proposition. I guess you would call it, just doesn't add up for me. Like, I can enjoy them if I'm playing against people who are also, like, god-awful at them and can just button mash, like... Um, when my two brothers and I gather together, like, sometimes we'll bust out, um... We would go down to a, uh, barcade, and we would take turns on, like, some fighting game machine, because, uh... Neither of them are really gamers, um, and I don't play fighting games, so we're all roughly on, like, an even skill level, because we're all just, like, trying whatever and mashing buttons, so it ends up being even, no one has, like, a huge advantage over anyone else, and we can enjoy competing on an even field where we all have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> the only quote-unquote fighting game I have a tiny amount of quote-unquote skill in is Smash, and that's like, I'm nowhere near like a competitive level, just, I know how to pilot a few characters halfway decently, but anyone who really knows what they're doing with Smash, who gets very serious, can absolutely wipe the floor with me. And you know, I'm, I'm one of those people who like, enjoys items in the Smash Ball, because they add a little more chaos and randomness and like, Moments of changing up and excitement to the game, whereas it feel, from what I understand, the people who want to, like, play Smash seriously, you know, as, as a fighter, they're like, no, those ruin it. Um, because it becomes less about character movesets and skill. And my response to that is, well, yeah, that's what makes it good. <laughs> but it's just different, very different ways of looking at it. Damn, I got close there. Dang. Super rude game. It's about to uh, run me out of my last credit here. That grab is good. Can I just keep spamming that grab? No, she ain't gonna let me. But I know there are plenty of people who are like, Oh, why would you ever play a visual novel? When I play a video game, I want to play a game. And on a certain level, like, sure, okay, I kind of get it, but... Visual novels can go some interesting places. Like, I still feel like, in terms of greater, like, gaming discourse, when it comes to visual novels, we're stuck with, like, This is a visual novel that isn't a porn game, and it's good. And that's, like, treated as a shocking thing, but... That's not really that surprising if you actually know the genre. Anyway, I'll get down off my soapbox. <laughs> Though there is a lot of visual novel porn games. I'm, I'm not going to pretend like that's not a thing. That is absolutely a thing. Um, game over. And that also brings us to time on the game segment which is just about perfect. So thank you everyone for coming out. Spe uh, couldn't uh, couldn't clutch out the arcade mode win with uh, the Lady Samurai. She's just not a perfect fit for me, but 
that about does it for me. So thanks everybody for coming out, spending a little bit of your morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it may be for you. If you're watching the VOD after the fact, I see you. I appreciate you. Um, hmm. I don't really see anyone I know streaming, which is surprising. Glad you enjoyed, Nate. Um, I guess I'm just gonna, well, I'm like tempted to raid Proton John because I know he's streaming, but a raid of three to him is like insignificant. But I'm probably gonna be eating food and watching Proton John. <laughs> I will next be streaming on Tuesday. It'll be a little later than normal, but I'll be doing some more Fuga 2. That's the Furry Child Soldiers Operated Giant Tank game. And um, yeah, that's gonna. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Nate. Yes. Uh,. Discord. I have two Discord servers now. One, which is Take the Shot Media, which is the group that consists of myself, Hugh Gaming, and Avalon. We run Poke Boomers and just uh, our group of friends who all stream. We have a bunch of social groups there. And I have a server where I am incredibly lazy and there's basically nothing on it. But you will see my streaming schedules and you will get an at everyone ping every time I go live, just in case Twitch slacks on showing you that information. <laughs> Um, yeah, that does it for me. I'm gonna go eat food, enjoy the rest of your weekends. Uh, my name is Vimbert. I'll see you around the internets. <laughs>